Recast. I am once again your host, Dana, and I am joined again by Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. How are you doing, Mr. Jr. Bailey? Uh, doing pretty good, Dana. Uh, looking forward to uh, talking about some uh, very, uh, very interesting things tonight. <laughs> A smaller lineup compared to what we had the last time, breaking down the entire MCU Phase 4 projects. This we have a little bit slower. Uh, we're gonna start off really quick. Um, WWE, that they're teaming with Netflix, again, because it makes no sense to not have this show on their own network, but WWE is going to work with Netflix to bring apart a live action family comedy series. And it's going to star Mr. Big Show. Remember him, Paul White? Oh yeah, I do remember him. Uh, I'm very surprised that uh, this show was happening. Uh, but I have to ask the question, is this the family that he talked about in his promo where he talked about, I can't uh, I can't pay the bills. I have, to, I have to do what the McMahons say now. No, it may <laughs> actually be like that. I don't think that was the original intention, but the way how it's described, it might just well be. So they have basically greenlit it. A new show called The Big Show Show. Oh, yeah, sorry. And so, okay. So, The Big Show Show will be a half hour multi camera family comedy series which stars The Big Show. So, it's a 10 episode series and will also star Allison Munn as a young actress, Renee Kalster, also Juliet Donfill, and Lily Brooks. Now, this is basically um, about a teenage daughter of the Big Show. He is now a world famous retired WWE superstar, right? So the daughter decides to come live with him and his two other daughters. And he realizes that he's quickly become outnumbered and outsmarted. Despite being five feet seven tall and weighing 400 pounds, he is no longer the center of attention. Oh, that actually sounds sweet. Basically him readjusting his life and and realizing what retirement really looks like, despite all this fame that he had. Now he's just dad. <laughs> it's, it's cute. It sounds really cute. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'll be very curious to see how uh, Paul White is when the cameras aren't rolling. So. I definitely am intrigued. Uh, this does fa follow a trend of other wrestlers that have had their little shows. I know Mick Foley had his show. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I would definitely check it out to give it a chance. <laughs> it's cute. Um, it will drop actually right around the corner. Oh, no, no, no. Filming is right around the corner. The show won't drop until next year. But filming is starting on August 9th. I think it's cute. I look forward to that. And it's just really interesting and also still frustrating. I guess it's WWE's way of trying to think that they can get recognized. Oh yeah. And they really, really want that Emmy nomination. They want to win an Emmy so bad that I think that they're doing all of these different shows. Despite them having their own network and their own production studio, they're still like type of recognition so they're they're going to Netflix. So Yeah, no you're right about that. To me, this is I don't know. I still think it should have been on their network and it would work much better for their tier system. But nope, Netflix it is, which is another streaming service that I would pay for instead of getting the actual WWE network. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, uh, moving on really quickly, we had a trailer that was released for The Walking Dead Universe. It is a new TV series. Remember, we were teased that we were going to get several TV shows and it's going to be a big Walking Dead universe. And we didn't really get any information aside from that. But the new teaser trailer that dropped for the third series, because we have Fear of the Walking Dead and obviously The Walking Dead, um, this seems to be a take on the children, which really seems to be refreshing, I would say. Um, these are brand new kids. 
the, this takes place during the whole Walking Dead situation, but it's about the Walking Dead. So it's about what other things is going on in the world is going to affect these. They all look like children. Um, it's a very veiled description as to what the series is. Um, it's a lot of the trailer itself is a lot of concept art that features post-apocalyptic renderings of the Walking Dead universe. It actually looks kind of like the video game. I was expecting Clementine to walk on set and be like, hey, you're gonna follow me. But we also do get some Art of the Zombies, which, you know, since this is a zombie TV show and yeah. it, the series won't ever die, um, <laughs> it will focus on the first generation to come to age in the apocalypse that as we know it right now. And some will be heroes, some will be villains. And in the end, all of their lives will be changed forever. So they will grow up in, in kind of this world that will submit their identities. So it seemed like it sucks. I would be all for it. Maybe like a Stranger Things with zombies. Oh, well, well, I, I, I just want to say this right now. I, I hope the show is nothing like Stranger Things in terms of the, uh, the comedy and all the other stuff. Uh, Cause uh, I know a lot of people have those comparisons. They, they said the same thing about uh, uh, it chapter one. Um, so I, I hope I, I, you know, obviously it's going to be a little bit more darker because The Walking Dead. Um, but uh, I am a hundred percent on board to watch this show whenever it when when it does debut. I, th I think that trailer says spring twenty twenty. Um, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to that because you know I have been watching the other show, but I tend to, you know, I don't really pay too much attention to that show because it gets a little tiresome after a while, you know, a lot of people leaving the show and all this other stuff going on. So I feel as though this will give AMC and, uh, you know, the creators of the walking dead an opportunity to approach things from a different perspective. And also, as they said in the trailer, show other things that are going on in the world and how it's impacting the kids. So I think it has the potential to definitely be one of the, uh, you know, one of the best Walking Dead shows on AMC, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens when uh, it debuts in uh, next year. <laughs> yeah, it, it will do the debut. Um, no, no, wait, where are we? Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I am slow. You're right. It will premiere on AMC in the spring, so next year. Yeah. It was like, no, spring is right around the corner. Well, they, they did try to confuse you with that trailer when he said this this spring. And I thought to myself, well, hold on a second. So we're, we're in the summer right now. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't you mean next spring? So that, that trailer did, did what was a little confusing when he said that at the end. So <laughs> I'm trying to forget all of summer and just be like, no, nah, it's spring. <laughs> didn't have some. No, no. What is this? So, yeah. So that I get the this is like the first time I said anything positive about The Walking Dead. <laughs> Actually, no, it's serious. Like, I'm sorry. I know people love it, and I'm not knocking anything that people love. There are like, what, 8 billion people on the planet. Love what you love. Not everybody's going to love the same thing. Still, yeah. it, it's painfully boring. Yeah. No, it, 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 well, it, it, it definitely has. Uh, I, I know that uh, they have attempted to get a little bit more edgier with... Uh, some of the stuff they did last season with uh, Michonne. Killing um, kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, 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 they did something. They did a similar thing with Carol in her storyline a couple of seasons ago. But obviously, this was a little bit more deliberate because that I remember that episode. And I see, Shimo, you know, Michonne slicing and dicing. And literally, the imagery... You can just you could just visualize a kid is getting the head chopped off. So that that was a little bit more deliberate with that uh, <laughs> with that approach. <laughs> kids, oh my! Yeah. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Oh, what happens if the kids got to kill each other? Oh my! <gasps> I'm picturing Lord of the Flies. I, I I do believe that that is a possibility because uh, in in the video game, you know. Uh, you definitely, 
well, there was definitely some kids killing each other, and in that last season, yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty violent in some of the stuff that happened. So I, I, I definitely would expect that to happen because there'll be, you know, if a kid, and then of course you're dealing with the whole situation because they had a very interesting storyline in the final season of the Walking Dead video game. And spoiler alert for those who haven't played it, I am going to say this, although you should have already played it. There was a storyline where there was a character, a little boy who his his sister was bit by a zombie and he was really trying to think, well, maybe she 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 could still come back. She'll she'll still be the same if you know if, if you know if I go see her and I interact with her and of course, unfortunately, that character, you know, did not survive, but uh yeah, they they, they can definitely play around with those with those type of things, because I know in that world, they, they tried to emphasize the story that, you know, there are some kids that they don't really understand what's going on. They still think people can come back. But once you are bitten and you turn, that's it. There is no coming back. So that was a good little storyline they put in there. You know, we may see some of this in, in this. I, I mean, but they'll probably have some other ideas. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. It reminds me of a, of a movie that's on Netflix. It's called Cargo. Um, it's about the, the zombies, and it's about a po- an apocalypse, and the zombies are running amok. It, it takes place in Australia oh. with the aboriginals. Yeah, it's, it's in Australia with the aboriginals, and the daughter, her father is turning. He got bit. He's turning, and she is trying to still being there and, and making sure that she's protected, but still he's keeping him alive, essentially. Hmm. Wow. Very interesting. Yeah, it's one of it's a really interesting concept with what they did. But if you like zombies, go check that out. It's, it's cargo. Okay, definitely. Moving on, there was a the TCAs. Basically, TCAs is a Television Critics Association. It's every year, twice a year. Uh, this was their summer press tour over in LA, not in New York, because I'm never invited to anything. But whatever. <laughs> Like, fine, you know, whatever. Okay. So um, they announced that we've we already known for a while that we were getting a bunch of power spinoffs. Like, for example, we know that Lorenz Tate is getting his own show. Yeah. Eventually. So this one, they made their big announcement with their first. Because remember, we're getting several prequels. So, but this is the first. And they announced that it will star Miss Mary J. Blige. It's the first of several prequels, and it's titled Power Book 2, Ghost. The show, not much detail has basically been dropped about this. But basically, I do know that Mary, she said she's very excited. You know, everybody always says, I'm so excited to to do this. It's going to be amazing. Um, Details about what the heck is going on and, and at all. It's just that she will be starring it. So, I, um, yeah, Fifty Cent did say. I said I got to find a replacement for me because those who don't know, uh, caned off. Uh, he said uh, we found somebody that Courtney's gonna have to ball working with. It's a female oriented, got enough juice and grace to make the show even bigger. Mm. Yeah, I mean, okay. She <laughs> ate Mary. And she she is currently on the Umbrella Academy, which is on Netflix. And she has improved greatly. She has taken them acting classes. Because, child, if you would have seen her in that other TV show, <laughs> that movie, Mud, I'm sorry. I don't care if they give Oscars out. Everybody can get an Oscar. Holly Berry done got one. But... Um, Mudbound, you could you could tell the difference in that acting between Mudbound and Umbrella Academy. Hmm. So, get that money. <laughs> so I, 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 I yeah, there, 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 there is a, a, a quick. I have a, a two quick thoughts as to what this particular show could be now that they have revealed that she is in it in the title of it. Um, so, 
you know, obviously, I, I hope that that title did not give away what's going to happen in the, the final season of Power. Uh, because I, at first I thought, well, Ghost is probably going to survive, and, and this is a show about what happens after that. But then I thought a little bit more, and I, I think, um, you know, there's a story that they definitely want to tell that they had mentioned a while back where they wanted to really show you what happened with Ghost. You know, I guess how he grew up and all this other stuff about how he got to got involved in the drug game, all this other stuff, you know. Mary J. Blige very well could 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 could, could portray the uh, the mother or something to that effect. I thought that. I thought that. Yeah, because uh, be like... that 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 would definitely give her uh, some opportunity to uh, you know I guess um, I don't know the mother that tries to steer the the son down a good path but uh, unfortunately uh, it doesn't doesn't go that way. I mean I have no idea. What? I would want the opposite. I want her to be like the drug dealer. <laughs> no, because yeah. like, like, like we, we all know Mary's past. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't want the happy, nice, fluffy church going Mary. I want the gritty. We got to get this money. I got these boys. I got to raise Mary. Yeah. I'm going to hustle, do some drugs. If I have to go with that man, I'm going to go with that man. Like make it, make it, make it. Making street. That's what I want. I want her, you know, possibly getting high on her own supply. I want that Mary. Yeah, they could definitely do that. A hundred percent. Show me you can go there. Show me then, you know, you trying to get into recovery. So you singing to Jesus. You went to <laughs> church one day. Vocals, but she's like, no more drama. I'm tired of the drugs. Give me that Mary. Yeah. They, 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 a hundred percent could definitely do that. Um, cause yeah, when you think about it, it, it it's, I mean, I don't know what, how else that character would be used. It, it, it feels like, it, yeah, it would definitely serve as a prequel. Cause again, that la that most recent, uh, trailer that I saw for, for power, the little teaser that they released on Instagram, very obvious that, you know, yeah, Tommy. Tommy is not going to survive, or Ghost isn't going to survive, or neither one of them are going to survive because they—that's the story I, I they're like trying to tell. So, both kill each other. <laughs> yeah. Get like a true stand of Do the whole "Am I my brother's keeper?" and then you both shoot. No, well, I, I hope I hope I hope they if they do that, definitely make sure they they do it better. Than, than what we have seen in the past in, in other movies, etc. <laughs> that movie did not age well. <laughs> well at all. But and no. also, bring back uh, What's My Face. Who was that? Give his role. I want him in the prequel. Oh, you talk, yo, oh, Kanan? Oh, can remember the guy who played Kendrick. Remember Kendrick Lamar, his character. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that character. They haven't done nothing with that character. Uh, past that. He'll episode. come back. I want him to come back. He needs his own show. I'm interested. He reminds me of Bubbles. I think. I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they definitely. Um, they had to approach him about. You know, coming back to to the show at some point. I mean, I would hope. Uh, but <laughs> we'll see about that. I would hope so too. That would be good. Yes. We need some some good acting, something to counterbalance Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So moving on. Um, we finally have some more information about it chapter two. Remember it chapter two? Oh, Very yes. quick. Oh yes. I hope that you're prepared and that you've went to the bathroom fully. And that you you know you you're you're ready for all the scares, because um, three hours long, nearly three hours long. <laughs> you know those who read the book, obviously, I think they're cutting out a lot of the BS from the book with the whole turtle, whole weird rituals. But um, it is going to be almost three hours. It is going to run at two hours and forty five minutes. So I, I have a question. So you you so you so you read the book then? Uh, no, Stephen King. You know what it is. 
Stephen King is one of those authors where it's like 5,000 pages and there's 10,000 characters. Really good. And then it just gets too much. <laughs> so no, I attempted to read it, but once you started getting with the turtles and the whole weird God and the universe thing, I, I was okay. Okay. I didn't need that kind of confusion in my life. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I fully understand that. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, them longer books, like I, I remember buying Under the Dome the day it released. Yeah. I still haven't finished it, and that was over five years ago. <laughs> finished it. Thing is like 10,000 pages an entire universe you know you have the, the mcu the length of the mcu would literally be just the book one book mm. so no too much for me but the adaptation i like so that's 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 a good thing but um almost um three hours long um long is this it's a little bit it's a little bit shorter than in game by the way <laughs> if you was able to hold your pee during in game you should be fine yeah basically the director was saying um at the beginning when you're writing and building the beats of the story everything that you put in there seems very essential to the story however when you have the movie finally edited and it's four hours long you realize that some of the events and some of the beats can easily lift it, but the essence of the story remains intact. You cannot deliver a four hour movie because people will start to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> See, I wish they told this to Peter Jackson and Lord of the Rings and all his movies because they were like 10 hours each. Yeah, um, with, the, with the multiple he, endings, yeah. Weeds in a handbasket, that was just so long. And then the Blu-rays and all the different releases had like even more footage. Oh yeah did say um but we ended up having a movie that is two hours and 45 minutes it's very good the movie has any complaints oh so, i'm good because that was like i said it's an unnecessarily long book <laughs> but to feel my complete satisfaction i don't want anything to be rushed i want to watch the essence that is jessica chastain and james mcavoy yes with that runtime, I, I I um I definitely don't have any issues with uh, the runtime, considering that uh, I just saw a movie that was two hours and forty one minutes a couple a couple of days ago. So um, I don't have a problem with the with, with, with the length of the movie. Uh, and again, you know, I definitely am curious to see how everything tr transpires in chapter two. That that is probably the next movie I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah. I, I can't think of a movie coming out in August that uh, I absolutely positively must must see, but this is definitely something I'm looking forward to when it comes out in September. Right, like, like yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that, and also they they released that the Joker movie, the one star of Joaquin Phoenix, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, we'll be running at um, two minutes, which is basically two hours and two minutes. Which is pretty short. That's like a decent sized movie. Oh yeah. I thought it would be longer. <laughs> so that's like a good thing. And and you know, Joaquin is amazing. Hours of Joaquin. I mean, unless he's just amazing, amazing. Oh yeah. That's 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 great to me. Uh I don't know if they have confirmed if this particular Joker is going to appear in other movies, but uh hopefully No, no, no. It's separate. It's a whole separate universe. So, so we're going to have um, what's his name return as the other Joker in the other movies. Then I guess you're saying. Yeah, we well, remember there there are several Jokers that, that are planned. There are there is the one with Jared Leto. Yeah. We appear in the Emancipation of Harley Quinn. <laughs> he's the, um, the the Birds of Prey or something like that. So he's gonna he's gonna appear in that because they have a huge breakup scene. Like the whole plot of the movie is rediscovering herself without the joker they break up they filmed it and they showed the pictures and everything he's going to be in it then also don't forget he is getting 
I believe, unless everything has been scrapped because DC is this thing right now, but unless it was scrapped, I think he's getting his own movie. I'm not a thousand percent sure about that. And then also there is still the Leonardo DiCaprio Joker. Yeah. It's supposed to be directed by Martin Scorsese. I don't know if that was scrapped as well, but that is so far with what they're doing. Interesting. Then also Suicide Squad 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One where Idris Elba replaced Will Smith, I believe. So. Hey. Hey. Not bad. Yeah. So I look forward to that. And they, they they said it uses nothing from the comics, this Joker. So nothing from the comics at all. Interesting. Huh. Very interesting. Kind of cool. But yeah, October 4th, nothing from the comics. Ooh, this should be fun. Yeah. So moving on, um, we had another trailer. It was a teaser trailer. But still a yummy trailer, American Horror Story, 1984. And I am a somewhat American Horror Story fan. There's certain uh, watch. <laughs> I can't that clown episode. I could not do the carnival thing. It's too much. You talking about uh, the, the freak show uh, season? Yes. Freak show was too much of a freak for me. <laughs> Sometimes he gets a little too much, and it's just, I cannot sit through it. <laughs> so this one is called, um, well, y'all know, an American Horror Story 1984. And it is, it is camp. It, it, it reminded me a thousand percent of the, 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 the dude with the Jace, Jason. Oh, yeah, Friday the 13th. Yes, Friday the 13th. I literally thought it was just called Jason. But Friday the 13th. Um, it starts off with basically, there's a bunch of trailers that, that dropped and it showed like different characters that were in it. And I'm very excited because um, the actress who plays Candy from Pose is going to be on the show, which by the way, you should watch Pose because it's amazing. I mean, I, I, that, that show is on Netflix now, right? Yeah, you can like when it ends, it'll go on Netflix. Netflix. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I think I have access to FX, so I will have to check that out. It's freaking amazing. Yeah, I, I know that the guy from Pose was in the last season of um, American Horror Stories, and he did an excellent job. So yeah, I, I, I might, I might check out that show. Have to because it's amazing. But um, basically, in the trailer that was dropped, it was a introduced us to a group of carefree youths. Youth, so this takes place in obviously in 84. And you have no problems and you want to stick your head out the window and your feet out the window. And you're like, yay, my life is great. I weigh 10 pounds. Everything's great. Woo, I have no bills. So that kind of like carefree essence that you had of a kid. You're like, I can eat ice cream and nothing goes to my thighs. And I am the apple of everyone's eye and I can do nothing wrong. So if they're basically a bunch of youths. They are camp counselors, by the way. So this will take place in camp. Okay. And it's called Camp Redwood. So the intern is Camp Redwood. And it's going to be for like a nice summer of fun, you know, when you get to go inside the lake and swim and nobody has the flesh eating bacteria virus. Like those days. So they're in the car and the music is blasting and like, woo, it looks like a gap commercial. <laughs> no, is that there is a murderer that is under the car, under the, the stowaway. And he's just like, along with them. And they don't know that there's the killer in there. So it completely, like, like I said before, it was like, this is Jason Voorhees. And this looks like fun. Like I can know this is gonna get really bloody, because Ryan Murphy and tendency of getting really dark and satanic, but really fun. It had like that retro slasher vibe. Yeah. If that's what you like. I I I I I, I just have one 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 question it is uh, and maybe they didn't confirm this or maybe they won't confirm it. 
does is, is this a consider a standalone a season or what, is there going to be some stuff in this that's connected to other things that have happened? Um, well, remember they're all the the the, the American Horror Universe place is, is all connected. Okay. Connected. Yeah. So, well. Evan yeah, Peters, like, you know, Evan Peters will not be in the season, so I guess. Uh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> he was. I'm gonna be in it, you know. And Sarah Paulson will have a limited role because she's working on Netflix Ratchet. Remember, um, Ryan Murphy is doing because they gave him a hundred million dollar contract oh, yeah. to programs and TV shows for um, Netflix. So he's doing Ratchet with. Um, Sarah Paulson, and he's also doing, the, I believe it's called The Politician, about this kid who dreams of being a coming up politician, and you follow his life as him trying to be a politician. It's a comedy. Mm. We go right. So it's really adorable. But with this one, going to star the regular cast of characters that we know. Um, instead, it will it will have um, like I said, Candy from Pose. It will have um, um, fart in my tea. Carrie, Carrie, uh, Carrie, oh fart, Carrie Fisher's daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. Completely blinking out, and I don't know why. It will star. It will star her as well. That's cool. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, and here was the thing that really was like the selling point for me. It will star Cody Fern, who played the devil. Oh yeah, yeah. The last one. That that uh, right. I think I think that yeah. makes sense because I, I think he, if I'm if if I'm correct, I think he, his last season was his debut, uh, in, in, on on the actual show. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad they used him again. So. We'll see what role he plays in this also. <laughs> so it will star, like I said, so to not butcher anyone's name, it will star Emma Roberts, Cody Fern, Billy Lord, who is Carrie Fisher's granddaughter? Daughter? No, daughter, sorry. Um, John Carroll Lynch, who was Twisty the Clown in season four. Mm -hmm. Orson is going to be in it, Men from Glee. Oh, yeah. Angelica Ross, who, like I said, Candy from Pose, Olympic skier Gus Jack Villar, and D. Ron Horton, who starred in Dear White People. Oh, premiere, okay. yeah. The show will premiere on September eighteenth. Awesome! I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. Like once it starts getting crazy, I, I might have to like bow out. <laughs> I can't do all the Satanism stuff, you know, some, it gets good and then it gets really, really sick. And then you're like, no, <laughs> but I do look forward to that. It does look, it looks fine. Um, moving on, we are going to talk a little bit about the box office reports. I don't tell you anything and you basically have to guess everything. Uh oh, the box uh -oh. office report. Uh oh, the box office report. Okay. As we know, this no next weekend is when we have the really big stuff. Weekend we had a um a little bit of the uh, what would you call it? A little bit of a lion was was there. <laughs> we had a huge opening for uh this random independent movie about Hollywood and it being once upon a time. Oh yeah, yeah. So. That was like the main, that was like the only new movie that dropped. So, figure out which one was which and 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 see from there. So, starting from the, the number 10 spot, The Farewell, which stars Aquafina. It's a drama. Hmm. Yes, you haven't heard about this? I, I actually, I, I have heard about this. Uh, I was considering uh, seeing that movie because it actually is playing here. Uh, I don't. I know okay. it's not. I know it's not playing in every theater. It's a, a little bit of a, a limited release. I just haven't uh, had the opportunity to see it, but I have heard that it is. It is a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's 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 Aquafina is getting like really great reviews, and it's basically it says Billy's family returns to China 
under the guise of a fake wedding, that sounds funny, to stealthily say goodbye to their beloved matriarch, the only person that doesn't know she only has a few weeks to live. Mm. Oh, that turned dark quick. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the trailer um, the trailer is, uh, they throw some humor in there, but yeah, it is a pretty grim situation. Um, but still, there's enough in it where it looks like it will be an intriguing movie to watch. At number nine is a movie that I thought are already released, and I'm really confused that it's still in the theater. Uh, um, it is Annabelle Comes Home. <laughs> There's so many Annabelle movies that it's just like, eh, at this yeah. point. I, I, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm surprised that that is still there. Um, but again, you know, a lot of the big movies are, uh, there's still a lot of big movies coming. So a lot of that stuff is going to get knocked out at some point. So at number eight, this dropped dramatically. That's the one starring Batista. <laughs> Duper. So, yeah. That's, Duba. That's right. Still haven't seen that one. Oh well, you, you definitely there are there definitely is, is, are some ways to see it. So uh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's like I here's the thing I like. I'm happy for Batista. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like literally, okay. Well, yeah. So, the movie, yeah. It, it, it definitely is a dis- it, is, it is disappointing, but if you can see it uh, as a matinee or whatever, uh, maybe it's okay. But I wouldn't spend a lot of money uh, to see that movie. That's all I will say. I'm just like frustrated. <laughs> I'm frustrated at the entire point that oh, like you know, the entire movie would have been solved if like if the uh, Batista's partner was wearing a bulletproof vest and he had glasses. Yeah. yeah yes. Absolutely. Tag lenses instead of glasses. And I'm like, it's just like, why am I continuing to do this to myself? <laughs> what police officer that you know goes into like, who is involved in like an action thing, wears just glasses and not contact lens? You know you're going to have to chase somebody. Oh, yeah. Have to duck and dive, maybe. Well, well, maybe, maybe, maybe he considered. He thought, "Oh, well, I'll still, I'll still, I'll still get 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 by." So he didn't really think about anything. Just like, backs. let me go into this this shootout where I could drop my glasses, can't see, and then the movie. I don't. I mean, yay! I I, I and, don't get it. And I, I and I also will add, you know, I I've never had a corrective laser eye surgery, but I. I, I would have thought that it, it, it'd take a little bit longer for you to uh, be able to see again. But, of course, because this is a movie, we had to speed up that process. So a couple hours later, oh, by the end of the movie, he could, he, he could definitely see by the end of the movie. You know? oh, it's just, it's just I, uh, <laughs> glad, like, just put some contact lenses. I don't, but okay. <laughs> okay, so moving on, I mean, it's just a... Tista, you collect your checks. I'm not yeah. mad at you. Pay your bills. Your granddad. Yes. So, moving on is a movie that I don't know why it's still in theaters. Good for those who like it. It's literally at the same spot as it was last week. Anywhere. It's just there. Hmm. And um, that would be a Latin. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised that that movie is still... Children. Damn. That's but the simplest answer. Children. It, 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 I, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to have to leave the theater, though, very soon, though, because some other movies coming out that uh, people are going to want to actually take up that spot. So we'll see how long that, that stays in the, uh, in the top ten. <laughs> I don't know. Remember, fun fact, Dark Phoenix is still in theaters. Oh, whoa. Wait, 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 hold on. Where is that at? 25, but it's still in theaters. <laughs> Zilla and Men in Black International. Men, 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 men in Black <laughs> International, definitely. Uh, I think it's about time for that to bow out so that I can forget about it. 
<laughs> so is Pokemon Detective Pikachu, and that was actually a good movie. Oh yeah, I'm surprised that's still in theaters because that it, it feels like that came Please. out a long time ago. Like, okay, I'm I I don't understand. Yeah, but um, still there, number seven, not going anywhere. Because <laughs> I'm not seeing Gemini, but good for you. On we have yesterday, because all my troubles seem so far away. <laughs> At number six, at uh, number five, we have your favorite. B. Oh, what's that? Crawling today, you got you got to crawl. <laughs> no, which, by the way, I'm sorry, I actually like crawl. I yeah. still think that it could be the sleeper hit of the summer. So boohoo that. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, to me. Uh... What what enhanced my enjoyment of the movie is the the reactions of the people that was in the theater with me. Every time that you know the alligator jumps up, the, the people right next to you jump up. Yeah, I laughed at that. So yeah, I would say yeah, it was good because uh, I had that effect. Remember, they there was a whole line of of certain people loud during the whole alligator scenes. They were screaming. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, are we being attacked? I was confused. <laughs> it's great, and it has really perfectly timed jump scares. Yeah. But it's not to the point where you need to be screaming. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's a little too much. But, hey, it was the, I, 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 I will say this, though. I will say this. I do hope that when I go see uh, It Chapter 2, that those same type of people are in... Wherever I go see it at, because uh, I want to see how they react. Because that movie definitely going to have some jump scares. So. See, in the same regard, <laughs> people who will be screaming <laughs> during it, chapter two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there, cause there, there was one scene in that first movie when they were inside the garage and yes. they were looking at that projector, and then all of a sudden, yeah, that everyone jumped up in my theater. When it that popped happened. through. Oh yeah. Like, oh my gosh, this is how I die. <laughs> this is the last thing I see when I die, and I lo I completely lost it. I think a little pee might have came out because it was just. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that 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 was a, a, that was a major impact with that scene. It was, you know, I really wish that uh peter skarsgård i believe it's peter yeah. um is, is given some type of recognition for that world i think oh. that's his father oh yeah i, I yeah i I, def I definitely hope so <laughs> is it because that's gonna really bother me is it peter I, I, is it peter guard or... no it's bill I confused the scars guards the father. Yeah, because there's multiple. So, yeah, they, they have a, he has a brother too. So yeah. Yes, he has the brother, and they're, they're a whole dynasty. They're an acting dynasty. <laughs> but yeah, so Bill Skarsgård, er, er, um, he's, he's he's the dude. He's the dude, dude. So he needs some type of recognition, just because his his embodiment of. Wise, it's just golly, and the voice, and then the smile. Oh yeah, just I definitely agree. <laughs> yeah, and I'm excited, but I will be like attacking people because I'm scared. <laughs> uh, that's just how it is. Like if you ask Tony, because I take Tony to go see horror movies. Yeah, I literally just use his arm to like start beating people with. Because I just get so excited. I'm <laughs> off and just like start hitting him with his own arm. You, 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 yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely will have to tell me about that experience when, uh, when you, when you go see this it's movie. You, you may see this movie before me, so you definitely will have to tell me, uh, how that, screen, how that screening goes. <laughs> I would love to, but yeah, I will say that, yeah, the, it, everything about it, the marketing, everything genuinely knows how to creep me out. And then it was one incident in real life, I was in the elevator. 
building. I didn't know, but this was right after I seen it. Yeah. And I thought it was rain in the elevator. And I legit freaked out because I was like, oh, snap, Pennywise is real and he's coming for my soul and I'm black, which means I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> moving on to number three, we have Forky. Oh or, yeah, toy, toy, toy Story is still, yeah, man, di, di, man di, Disney has, man, they have a, a lot of movies still in the theaters. So they Disney, make their money, hand over fist. Basically a battle of the Disneys. Like, get your <laughs> life. Like Avengers is at number 11. Yeah, see, that, that's okay. what I'm saying. They, yeah, because they re-released that, the, the new cut. Um, uh, that's that's crazy. They, so they have about four movies in the theater right, right now. Then. That's what you're saying. They do. They have like they have. Okay, yeah, they have. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so great. Okay, moving. So another random Disney movie is going to be at the number three spot. Far from home. Oh man, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, Far from home. Yeah, Spider Man yeah. had the best end sequence ever. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Sure, heart. So yeah, the the son of Iron Man, he's number he's at number <laughs> number three. Wow. A non Disney movie that we have is this. There's a non Disney movie and then there's a Disney movie. Which one do you think is number one and number two? Okay, um, I'm I'm going to make a guess that the Lion King is number one because. Uh, I know that there was a lot of people that uh, were still going to see that for a second time uh, at, at my church. They actually had, a, you know, opened up a screening for people to go see it as well. So I figured, OK, Lion King probably definitely number one because there are some that didn't see it open the weekend. And then there are some that wanted to see it again. So I have to make the guess that's number one. And the Tarantino movie is probably number two. Snap. So was it the Church of Beyonce? <laughs> Which, by the way, that's an actual book. It's the Church of Beyonce. Oh, Amazon. I, I, I'm gonna have to look this book up and see what that book is about. It's also on how to how to slay like Beyonce. Oh no. Amazon. I'm telling you. <laughs> is, but uh, let's see. Two spot we have. Toes, feet. Uh oh. Yep. Quentin. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Mr. Quentin. He's number two. Mr. Quentin's at number two, which means uh, Beyonce and her creation of words is at number one. Wow. So, Ella. just out of curiosity, how much money did it, it did this did this movie make at number two? Is it like at Once Upon a Time? Yeah. Once Upon a Time, they made their uh, weekend gross, which, by the way, is domestic, forty one million dollars. Okay, so I don't know if the international uh, number is out yet, um, but I will say this. Considering how much money that they spent on that movie, I, I, I would hope that they make all that money back. Because I think oh. the, the budget was around $96 million or something in that in that ballpark. So it's an, I'm pretty sure they are going to make it back. I just I never checked the international number, so I don't know how much it made when you could combine it's... domestic and international. Um, but yeah, they got some money, the money that they have to make back. Because this is the highest grossing opening weekend ever for Mr. Tarantino of Quentin. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Ford had a $90 million budget. Wow. Wow. Some pretty big people, Mr. Pitts. <laughs> who, who looked like he finally got his soul back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it has Leonardo DiCaprio. Who ain't got time for them women? <laughs> oh, so, you know, not bad though. Definitely for one, 
not bad at all. Like it's, it's pretty good. Like forty one million, and this was a movie that was very heavily anticipated. Yeah. The opening at Cannes, but yeah, this seems like like yeah, good for him. And at the number one, obviously, the seventy six million is their weekend domestic gross. Oh wow, that's crazy! Seventy six million. It's, 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 it's as if the movie opened this weekend. You said $76 million. That's how much it made. In the Basically, weekend. in the weekend, just a weekend. That's, that, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Have people, you know, the nostalgia. Then you have the kids. Then you have Beyonce fans. Then obviously you have your church people. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. This, that's crazy. Uh, and. That that is crazy, but you know it's not bad. Oh, so no, oh no! Oh no! It, oh no! It, it's, it's 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 excellent for Disney. It's excellent, in, in, you know, as a whole. So, but yeah, I, I I'm very surprised to hear that number because I know last weekend it it was a lot of money. So I was like, wow, it's like this is that's the, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, that is. But you know, The Lion King, obviously, it 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 it's grossing more. Yeah. Disney. But guess how much it did make? Ready? Yes. One billion. <laughs> wow. Go girl. Wow. Bam. Well. Just ten days. In just ten days, man. It opened in LA on July 9th, because you know it had a screening over there, and then it released in worldwide um of july so i'm pretty sure that, made- I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that after hearing this you know disney will continue to double down on the idea of making more of these uh reimagined oh. uh movies wait but it gets worse because um there there's a rumor that they're gonna announce that they've given uh beyonce basically an, an overlook deal. So she has the ability to make and produce and star in Disney productions, which she shouldn't do, but she's going to do. Oh, well, hold on a second. It, actually produce and star in. They, they're giving her the option. She has free will to do whatever she wants to do. Wow. I would like to, like, if she writes something, that, that would be really interesting. Or, you know, create some more albums about it. I'm not so gun ho on the uh, starring and acting in. So, so or voice it, it, overing it, it, and so, so is that a pretty much a confirmation that she will be involved in this uh, Little Mermaid uh, project next? Or the, um, the, the running joke is that people didn't like the fact that she was cast in the Lion King. So her way of getting back, um, Haley to star in the Little Mermaid, who you know Haley and Chloe is under Beyonce's. Oh uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like good for Beyonce. She's she's like good for you, but she the rumor is that she isn't also in talks to star in another movie. Mm. Uh oh. I mean, you know, um, again, get get that money because obviously they can afford it. Well, they could definitely afford it. They can. Uh, you know what? I actually would love to see. What's that? I want to see Blue. I want Blue to be in something. Wait, blue. Water. Blue Ivy. Oh yeah. Well, um, yeah. That I, I I do believe that um that time is definitely coming cuz uh it feels as though yeah, they they have big plans for her. You know, her father and her her uh mother are famous. So yeah. I can see that happening at some point. I don't know what the project is going to be, but it's definitely going to happen at some point. Oh, yeah, that would, and you know, she's obviously been in the spotlight. She's been on a lot of uh, the the songs, and she was in spirit. And you you saw how she was, and she has personality. I would like to see her. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It, it, it's definitely she going to happen. Like a little... I just I just don't yeah. know when, what project, but it is going to happen. And, and when it happens, I guarantee you, everybody will be talking about that. You'll probably see it trending all over Twitter, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, they will definitely be talking about this. When, once it happens, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would, yeah. We did the whole box office reports. Um, we have two reviews. 
slow weekend? Yes. No reviews, unless you've seen like secret movies that I don't know about. Oh no, I didn't get to see any other secret movies. I, I've only been uh, immersed in the two uh, things we're going to talk about here tonight. <laughs> oh yes, we were basically binge watched boys and also there is a tv show not a tv show sorry a movie called once upon a time in hollywood yes i had a weirder experience with it um it was literally the most baffling thing i've ever seen but um yeah is is yeah is there anyone in particular you want to talk about first well i i think uh Let's start with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because I want to hear this uh, weird experience. And because you also saw it before me, you know, I, I, I did see the movie on uh, Thursday night when it opened, uh, but you saw it earlier in the week. So please feel free to let me know, as well as all the other people that are going to check out this show, uh, what your experience was when you first saw it. <laughs> I saw it a couple days before you. I honestly can't remember because I'm slow and it's like a thousand degrees. Um, <laughs> it is very sad. Um, I saw it a couple days before you and it was at um, somebody's theater. Again, I can't remember anything. Um, so we went there and it's this really weird procedure where like, you know, you have the phone check-in where they didn't check in everyone's phones. Uh-oh. They didn't. I don't think that they checked in the press and they only checked in the people who were like regular civilians. He threw GoFobe, they got their tickets, I'm not sure. But they checked in those people and they didn't check in everyone else. First of all, it was a hot mess how it was kind of like situated. They have an entire theater, but they blocked off everything but the first two rows. Mm. Side aisles, which means that they they are expecting like all these secret guests and all these different people to come, like a hundred people or so. Everyone in the first two rows and in the aisles. Yeah. Fit, cause like I can't watch anything in the very first row because I have vertigo and I will just like you know what I'm like I'm gonna throw up on everyone. But they were adamant that people could not sit anywhere else but in the first two rows, so that caused a whole bunch of chaos as well. Oh jeez, wow. And I'm like, I'm pressed. I can't see. How can I review anything if I'm throwing up? Sit over there. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, so people were coming in. And as I said, certain people realized that their phones were being taken away and not other people. A complete commotion. You can't be taking people's phones and not other people's phones. Wow. This yeah. guy hysterically screaming at the the production people, the studio, that they were all. He's by the way, he was white. <laughs> Who he was angry at was also white, and the woman he was screaming at was white, and he was screaming that this was racism. Oh, really <laughs> screaming to the point where it's like, oh my gosh, is this racism? He was screaming with like such vigor and 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 sureness that this was racism that they took his phone and not other people's phones and he demanded to have his phone back and they would not give him his phone back and it caused quite a chaos. Now, th th this happened before the movie started, or was it was this literally before the movie started. Which, by the way, it started late. Okay, because I was okay because I was going to say if this happened. Uh... During the film, perhaps he was trying to uh, reenact uh, how crazy Leonardo DiCaprio is in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this is all before. They started late because, again, people, and then they blocked off one of the seats. So to get a seat was literally like a terrible game of musical chairs with shotguns. <laughs> Eventually start the movie, and this is when I start getting completely sick because again, I'm in the front row. I have to look up, which means I get dizzy really easily. So I'm already a hot mess. I'm like throwing a fit, to leave. So then I go all the way like I'm going to leave and I see the same spot where they told me not to sit, occupied. So I went 
and sat in that chair. Mm. Because I'm sorry that you want me to review when I'm throwing up. And other people were doing the same thing as well. They was like, just screw it, I can't see. So again, it was another thing of musical chairs. So the movie finally starts. And as you guys know, if you, it's kind of complicated because you got the whole Sharon Tate situation. So the movie itself gets a little complicated. But this is a movie that is about two best friends, I would say. I would say at this point, they're best friends. Yeah. Have Leonardo DiCaprio, who plays Rick Dalton. And he is a TV star. Ridiculous TV shows. Kind of like Western as well. And, you know, those cop shows. And it takes place in 1969. And he has his longtime stunt double is Cliff Booth. Okay, who looks very, very good. By the way, he got his soul back. Basically, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, as his character, playing these different roles and realizing that the legend that he once thought he was. You know, he's getting older. The parts are not the same for him. And also, with Brad Pitt, the stuntman, exactly getting roles either. They, they form this bond that they had throughout the years. You know, just to, you know how you just like someone, not in a sexual manner, but just a regular friendship that they've had. Um, it's a really weird situation where navigate the Hollywood scene, and he's going from one Western TV show, Bounty Law, for example, to an <laughs> to another one, and at the same time door neighbors with Sharon Tate and her husband Roman Polanski who you know um is Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski is played by some other random guy who's not even in the movie so it doesn't matter um and they're, they're basically next door neighbors and you don't you know they you're not getting from what I originally thought was like a Sharon Tate story the best friends the stunt double and and the actor their story who just happens to live next to Sharon Tate. Um, a lot of the music from the, like it's from the 60s, so there's a lot of the beautiful music from 1960s. Oh, yeah. And also deals also with the, the Playboy Mansion is also in there. Um, and it's just a lot of, it's just an actor and his friend and what happens when your career is kind of dwindling with like there are random scenes where like he was on the set of the green hornet which we all know had bruce lee oh yeah <laughs> there is that very controversial scene where um you know fights bruce lee and plays him which we all know would never happen in real life and is a blasphemy um then Charles Manson is, because he's Mansoning around, you know, he's around with the girls. Um, he is there. He's like saying that he's looking for a random producer, a record producer named Terry Melcher. So he kind of just hovers around. You know that he exists because he's always just hovering around the house. And it is a movie that I would say excruciatingly long and at parts and at times it just seems to meander it doesn't really have a focus or a goal these are these two characters and here is their life it doesn't when it comes to that kind of tight storytelling we don't get that mm -hmm. Dalton he ends up landing a role as a villain on the new series called The Lantern Ends up meeting this metric, this method actress who is adorable. I think she's all of like nine years old. Oh yeah. She's just, she takes her acting very seriously, very seriously. And Leonardo is kind of going through that phase where he realizes that he's not as good as he was anymore, and he's very depressed about it. By the way, that's about everything that's going on in his life, and. I believe Brad Pitt is kind of suffering from a little bit of depression as well, because these are people who imagine being like big time legends. Like imagine if you're John Wayne and now you're doing B movies, that kind of level of kind of sadness. 
So it's that kind of thing. That's I feel, and that seems to be the only grounded movie because, like I said, it completely meanders and it gets to the point where is looking at all these different girls, and he ends up taking this teenager, her age, in a car, and he's trying to drive her. She's a hitchhiker, which was a big thing back in the 60s. I don't know why, but y'all love to hitchhike. <laughs> I wasn't wondering why you are murdered later on. But um, he ends up meeting this girl, and this is the connection through the Charles Manson and the Sharon Tate situation. He ends up meeting this girl, and she drives him to the ranch, which is a very huge ranch with a lot of horses and just these kids. They're starving to death. Someone, take, please take a bath type of looking kids. Um, where he knows that one of the guys, when he's like a friend that he has, and he wants to see whether or not he's still, they're still alive. And it kind of builds up on the tension where you know that these kids, but at the same time, there's kind of like the maybe a little dangerous element to it. Yeah. How we're introduced to the Manson clan. Meanwhile, Charles Munson himself is not really that main of a focus. We don't get him until the very final act. I mean, we get glimpses of him when he comes to, comes to the house and keeps asking for this producer who no longer lives there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this being a Charlie Manson movie, this is not a Charlie Manson movie. This is, again, about an actor who lives in L.A. who happens to be next door neighbors with Charlie Manson. The thing is that so it runs, for me, it runs unnecessarily long. It felt like a four-hour movie when actually it was just an hour, well, it was 161 minutes, which I don't know what that converts to because I failed math. <laughs> two, two hours and uh, about 41 minutes. Basically, it's a three-hour movie that feels like a four-hour movie. Nothing really happens because it's just a lot of talking, but nothing really happens until the final scene when... Brad, yeah, when um, it was I believe it's Brad Pitt was given a, an acid laced cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Charles Manson, up. and I will say that this thing, what you would expect, the last um, which is a very huge scene, and it builds up to like, okay, why is Sharon Tate there? felt like this movie it, I was very conflicted whether or not you like something or you hate something I was just conflicted about my feelings overall with this movie I felt that it was again unnecessarily long if it was tighter with the script then it would have definitely helped my attention because there were parts of which I was like I'm dying inside why are these monologues so long then there was parts where, like, it is beautifully filmed. The soundtrack, because it is, again, the 1960s, is incredible. Quentin Tarantino is he does know his music. Oh, yeah. When it comes to that, it was great. But it was long. It was boring. There are parts that were downright hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Unevenness, when you're kind of like trying to survive this movie because it's get her literally just way too long. And then there were parts that were just downright hilarious. And I do believe Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio have amazing chemistry with each other. It's just really great. Um, then there that sprinkles that, that keeps you awake. And I really appreciated that. At the same time, felt that this was how to explain it. It forced people to truly like this movie because of how that final act went down. Charles Manson and the Sharon Tate part. Yeah. Because of that, it manipulated your emotions. The scene with, with Bruce Lee, Leonardo DiCaprio, it's one scene. <clears throat> where literally they're fighting each other and outdo each other. And it's meant for humor, but it is so re And you know that it's not 
because we know the the fighting style of we know his discipline of teaching others how to fight this revisionist twist on things that I'm for the laughs and the chuckles but at the same time it's just this is ridiculous I felt he, Leon, not Leonardo, sorry, that Quentin Tarantino was trying to recreate magical about Inglorious Bastards, which again was a revisionist story. Mm -hmm. I felt that know how the Sharon Tate story actually ends, we was all expecting that. How it actually goes down in the movie that ends up one being like a really great because the crime itself was so horrific woman <laughs> who was slaughtered they were stabbed it's her unborn child she and four other people were brutally murdered that when you do get the ending that quentin films that you do feel like oh this is really great i'm Tear it apart and you really look at it. It's just something that's there to manipulate your emotions to say that this is a, overall an incredible film. And I felt that he used a murder in order to sell a movie. When in fact, the whole Sharon Tate situation, even if you removed it and didn't have Sharon Tate and Charles Manson around, even if you just had like the girls, yeah. uh, uh, that storyline, it could have just been here some random murders because 1969 was a was a crazy situation. The 60s were nuts. You had Summer Sam running around. Oh yeah. I, I, I was it B, was BTK what, during BTKS during the 70s? 70s. Oh, he was a 70s. So no, not 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 him yet. But you know, it was it was it was a crazy time. Was the 60s just in general? down in the 60s and i think that you just did not have to have sharon tate and and charles manson it could have literally been billy bob and sue joe and an effective finale yeah and them doing what they did that revisionist like it did in inglorious bastards i felt yeah yeah, the yeah, uh, 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 alternate take on what uh, he, I guess he thinks should have happened. And overall, it it does work on the name "Once Upon a Time in Hollywood." Yeah. At the time, yeah. you did have Leonardo DiCaprio, who's Rick Dalton, have this incredible, great career. So you have him doing a lot of reminiscing of how great he was. You have Brad Pitt as Cliff Booth. And you have all these different special, like he was doing the, the stunts. Yeah. Again, reminiscing, once upon a time, look how great I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at all the things that I could do. You, it plays really well on the name itself. This, Dakota Fanning, she has one scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which basically is, is an actual member of the Manson family. And, and, you know, these are, they're depicting real people. We haven't really seen her in a lot of things because she's busy living a life and being amazing. And, and she has this one scene where Quentin Tarantino can really pull in that tension because there's a part where we don't know whether or not someone's been murdered. Yeah. Emily is capable of, because remember again, Aaron Tate, there were multiple murders that occurred. We don't know really what's going on. And Dakota has like this embodiment of a leader where you, if you had Charles Manson as the number one, I felt like she was number two. Real story of Squeaky, which, you, you know, everything that she did. Yeah. But I do know that it kind of felt like everything when Charles wasn't there. And it, the, everyone else listened to him. But yeah, and also there was Bruce Dern, who um, 
played one of the role who was one of the roles which by the way he replaced uh burt reynolds but burt reynolds died so that's what happened to him mm -hmm. we did have the final this was the final role of luke perry who again died very young i believe 51 or 52 from stroke mm -hmm. Russell did a really great job. Zoe Bell, who is always in Quentin Tarantino's movies, she's the stunt woman. She plays has a role as a stunt coordinator also. Yeah. But um, she had one scene, and she was really great. But the acting overall was. Also, I have to applaud. Did not get a single N word. <laughs> it was the sixties, so I was like, "Oh, it's going to fly." <laughs> then I realized there ain't no black people in this movie. Yeah, well, that that's why there wasn't a uh, that. What the no N word? <laughs> there was no black people. Al Pacino was good. I guess. I guess. Black, no... <laughs> I guess the black people weren't making movies in the sixties. <laughs> oh, I did count. I counted a total of four extras, so we made it. But we wasn't called the N word. Yay! <laughs> oh. So that's the plus side. He's improving. Quentin's learning. You can't say the N-word like that anymore. Woo! So yes, we're we're baby steps. But overall, I still don't know how to rate this. I'm literally right down in the middle. Judge for yourself. If you like it, good for you. If you don't, good for you. But to me, it was just like, okay. You. That's my rating. I appreciate you. That sounds like a pretty good rating to me. <laughs> yeah. So I will say a, a few quick thoughts on the movie also. Um, I think that you made a lot of excellent points about a lot of the things with this movie. So let, let me first uh, talk about some of the positives. Uh, I definitely agree that the movie is shot very well. The mm -hmm. acting is great. Uh, I especially love the soundtrack. And I actually mm -hmm. downloaded that soundtrack after I watched the movie. Like I went on Spotify and I saved it to my playlist so I can listen to some of the other songs. But I will say, yes, Tarantino, the way he uses music in the movie is, is very masterful. You mentioned uh, a lot of the tension that... Um, that you said that you felt in some of the scenes. W one thing I did notice is that that tension also played was very much connected to the music because that same scene you're talking about when Brad Pitt enters the room that Dakota Fanning's character is in and then he's looking for that guy, George, and he walks to the back. That music made you, made me think like, what, is she going to get up and hit this guy with something? I mean, it, it felt like it could have went in that way. And then fast forward to the end of the movie, after they have dealt with the Manson family, with the, the group that tried to come in there and deal with them, and then, you know, Rick Dalton gets invited to come up to Shannon to, 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 to Sharon Tate's room, that music they played at the very end, it would start you know, it's it's it starts and sounds a little spooky. That made me that made me and a lot of people in the audience think so the Manson family must be coming back to, to pull off this murder, right? Because the tone of the music, it, it, it sounded very weird. And then, you know, it went in and, and went, then, of course, when it ended the way it did, just abruptly like that, you know, he finally meets uh, Miss Tate and uh, that's it. It ends. People was a little disappointed because they thought that that's what, that's what, that's what was going to happen. But obviously, a, as you mentioned, this is an alternate take on, um, what Tarantino wanted to make for the movie. Um, so as far as the, the criticisms, that is the one thing that I was trying to understand going into this movie. You know, I understood that they wanted to focus on Brad Pitt and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, both of the friends, their relationship. But I was trying to figure out what is this connection with, 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 with Sharon Tate and why is, is this character a part of this movie? Um, so, in terms of how they handled the character, I I think that first and foremost, the, the actress that they, they got to play to play her, I, I didn't have any problem with the actress that they chose. I thought she, she looked great in the role. She did not have that much that she can say. 
or well, she didn't have that much that they allowed her to say. You know, they kept the mm. you know they they wanted you to focus on the visuals of of how she looked as an actress. But I will say this: I did appreciate the fact that they had the scene where she basically got a chance to see herself in a movie. I, I that that for something about that it, I think is meant to be like a, a, a obviously I don't really know if she in real life had that feeling but I, I I feel like there are a lot of people who you know if they if they were going to star in a movie for the first time they probably had that feeling also when they saw themselves for the very first time on the big screen uh you know in 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 an in actual film so I. I did find that a little interesting that they put that in there as to try to show you this is a personal side of the character. How, however, um, in terms of making the connection with this character being connected to these other two characters, yeah, I felt like this, again, this movie was mainly about Leonardo DiCaprio and his friend Cliff Booth, a.k.a. Brad Pitt, and how they were navigating Hollywood on the decline of pretty much their careers. Um, right. So I, I agree that you probably could have just focused on the, those characters, and if you wanted to have the hippie girls they had the interaction with, that's totally fine. You know, you throw that in there as a conflict. But uh, I, I I do feel like coming into this movie, I that was the struggle that I had is trying to figure out why is this character a part of this, and by the end, now we know that the mo- the main point of the movie was to was that Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's their ultimate goal was to take out the Manson family <laughs> and prevent this 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 murder from happening. Um, so, and, and to go the, the last point that I will make very quickly is um, what you mentioned about that third act and how crazy it got with that whole fight sequence. That is, a, that, that is essentially what everybody has been talking about with this movie. And, and every person that I have ta- I've spoken to that has seen it, that's the first thing that, that comes up that they talk about. That's really the mainly, the mainly the only thing they talk about. So obviously, the end result was, I think, that was the part that he wanted to get to. And, that, and as you said, that would make people feel as though it was an excellent film because of that mm-hmm. ending. Um, but that is where it, 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 it is the flaw because I do feel they were going somewhere with what they were doing with the storytelling. But uh, yeah, it just it, like the whole sequence where you show all of this stuff that happens in, in the day, and, you know, you know, when Rick is on the set and, you know, then uh, Cliff has his deals with the hippies and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden you have this thing six months later. I was like, well, well hold on a second. Six months later. Wow. That's um that came out of nowhere. Yeah, well, remember they was in Rome yes. doing the, the movie, and and what I didn't appreciate about that was that when they in, within that six month span that they never show, that's kind of where um they broke apart. Remember, one ended up getting married. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leonardo got married, and and Brad Pitt kind of like had to go and find his own path. Can't support you anymore. This is my new life now. So you saw, like, there was a demise of the friendship, but we didn't know anything that happened within that six months. And we get, like, eight hours of boring stuff. It kind of changes the dynamic of their friendship. We don't get at all. Yeah. No, no, you're 100% right. Um, So, yeah, that feels like there was something missing there. Um, And as for what you mentioned earlier about Charles Manson making his cameo appearance. It, it, it felt as though what I thought they were going to do when that character showed up, I thought they were going to show, well, this is a character that actually meets Sharon Tate to basically instill in the audience and give you fear as though, well, we know what's coming. Now that she's met this guy, you, you know, this is how she gets introduced and, uh, and brought into this whole thing. And then they also had that scene where she also picked up a hitchhiker, one of the girls, and brought them to a destination. So I thought they were trying to, you know, tease and say, okay, this is how she gets involved in this. But essentially, not, they didn't revisit any of that because no, the, the Manson, when they came there, obviously they were going to go to that house. But then, of course, they had the whole interaction with uh, 
with Leonardo DiCaprio, and then so now oh, we're going to take these guys out instead. So I was confused about them putting that in there and then not revisiting it later as to why did you have this tease that she's going to somehow meet these to people. build up the that was I felt it was to 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 build up the tension because from what I understand the Sharon Tate murders were, were random. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't they I don't I do not believe that they knew each other. Okay, okay. They, I think that they, because they were doing random killings, house died. Okay. That um, makes sense. So it was it was Sharon Tate, it was the the unborn baby, and there were four other people that were murdered, and it was three three of those girls who who did the murdering. Hmm. But um, what I what I do believe is that they did not know each other. Okay. Made it even more heinous is like all these random people are being murdered. So I think what in the film that they, what they did was they did change some things. Like I said, it was supposed to be random. And also, I think that as a film, it was to build that tension. Yes. All knew it was, was expected. So by him meeting, because remember, he, he kind of met Sharon. You know, it's, it's, it's my that old guy there, Billy, who previously owned the house there. Yeah. She came out and she waved and you saw her with the belly. So it's like, oh man, so knew she was pregnant. And it was kind of like to build up the tension because that final act, I was like covering my face because I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and and also the kind of the thing that they changed was, um, I know that it's uh, Brad Pitt's character who ends up dropping the acid. Well, when in actuality, it's supposed to be the family who drops the acid and then does the killing. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I see, I see and it. and yeah, and the guy George Spann, the guy who who was played by Bruce Stern, that was a real person. Mm. He was eighty at the time, and the followers um, allegedly um, they took would have sex with him in order to stay. Yeah, yeah, but they would they would have sex with him in order to like not. He lived. He he wasn't killed. Mm. That's right. so that was one good thing. And, and and you mentioned that they were going to initially get uh, Burt Reynolds to play that that character. Yeah, but he died. The the now that is unfortunate. But one of the interesting things that I that I did read about this movie after is that basically the characters of Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt that is supposed to be a portrayal of the real life relationship between Burt Reynolds and his. Stunt, 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 stunt friend. Um, so I, I find it interesting. I see what he was trying to do there to cast Burt Reynolds in that other role. Um, but yeah, because 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 the thing is, when I kept watching the movie, I was trying to figure out well, who is Tarantino trying to emulate this 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 actor as? Is this somebody that we've actually seen in movies? And while the character is fictional, that some of that stuff is actually based on. The real life relationship between Burt Reynolds and and, and 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 his and his friend. So that was that that was a uh, I see what he was going for there. Um, and and they really did also say I am the devil. I'm here to do the devil's business. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I I did see that. I heard about that. Um, <laughs> I, I heard about which that. Is, which is a lot more serious in the real life version. But oh yeah, this, oh, they yes. kind of took that comedic. Yeah, they, they they definitely made it more comedic. W w one thing that 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 scene did did achieve the goal of, uh, they definitely made it graphic and brutal uh, with the with the way that they handled how the people were taken out. Um, <laughs> the dog got involved mm -hmm. as well, so uh, a very a very pivotal scene for all of the characters. And, and you know, obviously, you know, I I, I mean, I was surprised that the. You know, obviously that 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 there was actually somebody actually did manage to 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 wound uh, Cliff because I mean they made this character look invincible with the way he was beating people up in this movie. You know, the little in you know the fight with uh, Bruce Lee that we saw towards the beginning of the movie. Um, yes, he did get kicked, but he threw Bruce Lee up against that car. Man, a lot of people was laughing at that scene. So that 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 was uh, they definitely made this character look like he was. Um, I don't want to say invincible, but 
He just he he was just he was just ready to he was just ready to throw down in any fight. Um, so that was, that 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 was a pretty uh, boss uh, portrayal, I guess you could say. And um, yeah. and I was gonna say, uh, what was I gonna say about the same along the same lines of that? No, nah, it, it it it'll it'll it, it'll probably come back to me. But that that scene. Like, like I said, that that scene was um, definitely every person that I have talked to since I've seen the movie. They all talk about that scene, and again, the music in that scene, like that song. Now, it, it has been stuck in my head since I've seen the movie, and I that 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 song, it's a good song, but man, it's like what's the, the, was it? Was, we'll say what? This was the song. The song about. Uh, you keep, uh, you know, about the guy, the, the band, it's a rock band talking about a relationship where the girl keeps on dragging him along and he doesn't want to be in the relationship. But that, that song, it just, it's an old song, but uh, obviously Tarantino, he had a, another version of the song in, in, in the movie because I listened to the soundtrack. It's a different, it's an extended version with a couple of other things they added to it. And, and it sounds good, but yeah, that. The way he uses music in the movie is, yeah, it's fantastic. That that is, that soundtrack really, really captures the period. That's the other thing I was going to say. Also, I have to say, without a doubt, the way that they captured the setting, that that is just spot on. Now, I didn't, I, I was not alive during the '60s, so I cannot, uh, you know, say for sure it's completely accurate. But it is 100% believable. With the way they had the setting, the clothing, the you know pretty much the way they portrayed because I mean I know this was shot in Los Angeles obviously but I cannot tell you by looking at that movie that it feels as though it was shot in a modern day Los Angeles because the time they really matched everything up to really make it believable that this is during that time period. Um, so that was good, but yes. If I was to rate the movie, uh, personally, I definitely think the movie, and this, this will shock you, I definitely think the movie was better than Midsommar, uh, without a doubt. Um, it definitely has some flaws, but if, if, you, if somebody was to ask me, based on the Tarantino movies, would I say that this is at the very top of the list? Um, I have to say no, because I enjoyed the hell out of Jackie Brown. Uh, I consider Pulp Fiction to be a classic also. So no, I cannot put it up that high on the list. I could say it's on the list, but I, if, in the top three, I, I don't know if I could say that. Um, I could definitely say it's, it's a film that I would watch again for sure, but I would not say, um... It is Tarantino's best films, one of his best films. No, I think there's a lot of other movies he's done that were really, 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 really great. But um, that's that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it wouldn't it wouldn't crack the top three for me either. I thought, um, for like for example, the thing that I loved about Inglorious Bastards was just how well written it was. Yes. Mm -hmm. self was just like oh my gosh this is amazing it was like a, every time um for walt spoke it was like shakespeare it's like again it was like okay it exists yeah uh, not the top three you know it, it's not beating out reservoir dogs oh no oh no mm -hmm. yeah. or jackie brown it, 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 it is funny because the Reservoir Dogs also had their violence scene at towards the end as well. So the violence, the chaos. So <laughs> it does beat out um, Django Unchained. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Scully, yeah. <laughs> there wasn't that. I agree with that. Sure. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's. Once upon a time is, is a fairy tale. Yeah. Fairy tales go see that. Absolutely. Moving on. 
the, the, unless you have anything else to say about the movie. Oh, no. Yeah, I definitely would tell people to go check it out if they're interested, for sure. Uh, go like it. Just because we're confused doesn't mean that you should be, too. <laughs> it's great. On, we saw this uh, little tiny TV show. Prime, it, it debuted, dropped early, dropped on Thursday, I think. And it is the, I would say, and that may be a little presumptuous, but oh. it is one of the best, best superhero, the best non-superhero superhero show ever. <laughs> so take that. It is redonkulous, and I know you saw it. Oh, yeah. See it, because I've been, I've been speaking about this for months now. Yeah. Released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recall that you had told us before that uh, you was under a very strict embargo, so you could not talk about this for, this for, for, for several months. You couldn't talk about yes. what you saw, so, yes. Because I'm like, why not? This is brilliant. Do you realize what you have on your hands? <laughs> Speak this goodness into existence. Why? But, yeah, um, they, 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 they dropped which goes by so quickly just because it is so incredible so to break this down is to say that this is everything that you wanted in a superhero movie especially if you're tired of superhero movies <laughs> literally the only way to, to, to actually break this down so it takes place in modern day america where there are superheroes called soups it's it's kind of based around on the Justice League. So you have your Aquamans, you have your Supermans. I don't know who is going to be a Batman, but you got your mans, right? And then you got your Wonder Womans, and you got your Stretch Armstrongs, and you got whoever else are basically owned by a company. So imagine if Marvel, let's not, you know, start a war. Marvel or DC, they own superheroes. And not just own them. That meant that, you know, they tell you how you look. They tell you who's going to be rescued. Mm -hmm. They tell you where to go. They tell you how to speak. You have a PR person. You have a team of lawyers. Um, if you accidentally kill someone, you have lawyers for their lawyers. You're, you're very well protected and kind of in that bubble. But at the same time, you can't want to originally live it. You're like, oh, well, here's this. I'm a person with superpowers. I want to be a superhero. Let me go do that. You can't do that. Move it. So you're basically owned by a company. Anything that you do, what you wear, how you speak, uh, what you smell like, if you wash today, do it. <laughs> <clears throat> Several different storylines at the same time. Where you're going to start off with this guy. His name... Um, Basically, it starts off with, he with Huey by uh, Dennis Quaid's son, by the way. So you have this guy, his name is Huey. He works at, um, she says like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a, what do you call that appliance store? Right? Uh, like, a like a Best Buy. Yeah. Well, I, mean, does a, he <clears throat> I guess you could say a small budget uh, Best Buy. Small budget Best or, Buy, uh, where you know, mom and pop type of uh, <clears throat> uh, shop situation. Yeah. Well, you know, he's really great with technology. He knows how to hook up your cable. He can do the nanny cams. He knows how to hack into something. Very simple life. He's living his mundane life. He's, you know, he's mild mannered. It's not somebody who's loud and out there. He has a lovely girlfriend. Her name is Robin. They're about to move in together. They're happy, you know, young and innocent. Not many bills. So, <clears throat> You know, they're, they're like, hey, you're going to move in. They're really happy. It starts to excited. In the blink of an eye, Robin is killed in the most hilarious and saddest way. And extremely brutal and violent. She is hit high velocity impact by a superhero named A-Train. And he's like, he's racing down the street. She's trying to deliver a package. And He's like, I can't stop. I can't stop. This, of course, infuriates Huey. I'm like, 
basic mental like mental trauma. Imagine the love of your life instant in front of you, and you're still literally holding on to her hands. He ends up going into the state of depression, which, by the way, his father, um, Simon Pegg, who character was originally based on in the comics. Yay. So because, like I said, A-Train is a superhero and he's protected by this superhero called the Vault, the Vault International, he, you know, there's lawyers for lawyers. So the lawyers offer $45,000 for Huey's in silence. You know, Huey's like, I want, I want this to be brought to justice. I'm angry. I'm mad. I want to, I want all the superheroes to pay for what happened. And, and he's just very angry. He's dealing with that and he's trying to process that. At the same time, you have this girl in Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, yeah, in Des Moines, Iowa, right? She, her name is Annie January. And get into the seven. So remember how I said like all the superheroes are owned by the Vault International? So basically Marvel DC. Oh, yeah. um, she wants to join the teams, like the Justice League. And in order to do that, she has to audition, which is a very interesting way where, you know, you have to go in, you state your name, and they kind of give you a look up and down, see if you're physically attractive. Do you fit the part in the group? How does it work that way? And you basically show off your superpower. Her power is to the ability to kind of emanate light from her hands and affect any type of light that's around her. She auditions and she ends up being accepted into the seven. And the reason why is because the one of the, the previous superheroes called the Lamplighter, I love that name by the way. But anyway, the Lamplighter is retiring. Anywho, so he's retiring, she's stepping in his place. And you know how you have really big dreams, like I said before, I'm gonna be a superhero, I'm gonna save the world, I'm gonna change, you know, how everything is shaped, I'm gonna be my own person. People are gonna love and respect me. When she gets there, she realizes that she's controlled instantly. Everything that she wants to do, she has to go through with them. At the same time, you have the seven, which is also predominantly male. Mm -hmm. Deals with women working in male dominantly, you know, roles and what happens to them. And instantly, right away, she is, uh, I don't know the proper terminology, but sexually assaulted by one of the superheroes. Just fellatio situation. Um, as a result, that kind of changes her entire perspective of how she views life. Also, there is another woman who's there who I would say is modeled after Wonder Woman. She has the ability to fly, so we're going to just go with Wonder Woman, where she sees everything, but she's kind of silent about it. And it's like, you know, suck it up, girl. I've been here before. And it kind of really harpens on the Me Too movement and that kind of network of silence that they deal with. So while that is happening, at the same time, there's a guy named Billy Butcher. Billy Butcher is a regular average man who was harmed hero team known as the seven but more specifically homelander which we will get into because my god breathe but is out to try to expose the superhero corruption because he's been dealing with them for a very long time and he kind of jumps upon huey and his situation was wanting to get revenge and to seeing a train's demise because remember again, a trade killed his girlfriend. So they kind of build a very bloody bond together to take on the superheroes. At the same time, we're gonna go into, there's a main superhero, the embodiment of Captain America with Superman. Homelander. <laughs> Made by, um, what was it, Tony, Anthony Starr, who previously starred on Banshee. Mm, okay. We're going to get into this. 
he, like I said, he's a combination of like he was Captain America and Superman. So he's like the all American blonde. I love America and the universe and all of its people kind of guy, right? He's out there. He's saving the day. He's taking selfies. He's the number one trending topic. Superheroes are trending and it's all about likes and dislikes and percentages and polls and that kind of thing. So like I said, you're controlled by not only just, you know, the PR people, but by the media as well. But he's doing really great in the polling. So he's, he's, he's great. Everyone loves him. A very interesting relationship with the main, I would say the CEO of, of what is it, the Vought International, which is basically, like I said, Marvel DC, who is played by Elizabeth Shue. She is the vice president. Her name is Madeline Stelwell. And trying to, to uh, look good and to keep the company image up. So she would basically be a, a Kevin Feige. <laughs> I would say. She's Kevin Feige. Making sure, you know, you, you get the superheroes that we want. They're portrayed a certain way and everything's great. The show differentiates from this is not your average superhero show. Question, if you are basically immortal, powers that no one else has, different things that you can get away with and no one can stop you. You have the group, the seven, and they're all corrupt people is the most corrupt ever breathed and it is and it makes you cry and he literally has no cares about anyone's feelings like his true nature he will kill babies he will kill children <laughs> whatever it is to accomplish the goal to make sure he looks good and he will put on that sad, sobbing story because he will sell it with all of his heart. It's just the basic plot of the story. Yeah. It gets completely crazy. It is 10 episodes of sheer brutality, boldness, Filmed so many different jokes that there's jokes inside of jokes. Children, do not watch this if you have kids. Or kids and want them to be safe and never harmed. Do not watch this. Guys. And they're just, it's brilliant and tragic. And Homelander is the greatest character to ever live. This was the most beautiful show. And it was already green. It's already greenlit for a second season, by the way. And we're gonna get to know who all of the characters are. But but every character in the show, if I'm talking too much, please let me know. But <laughs> every character is going through something. Like I said, Bill the Butcher, who's played by Carl Urban, he, he can't find his wife. He's looking for his wife and somehow um, the Seven was involved with it. You have Huey, who was killed by the superhero A-Train. A-Train himself is going through a lot of insecurities and a lot of drugging issues, and he has a very interesting girlfriend, and he's not mentally stable either. He's going through a lot of situations. Homelander is just a complete sociopath. Not even a psychopath, he's a sociopath. He's going through his own situation and it ends up connecting with the other storylines. But him, my, yeah. Then you have, like I said, you have Starlight. She's trying to find her own way and she's also being abused and it's really sad. You have Queen Maeve, who is basically uh, like the, the Wonder Woman of the group and she's suffering from severe burnout and she's the ex-girlfriend of Homelander and she knows just exactly what Homelander is capable of. And there's this scene in an airplane thing and brilliant and just amazing all at the same time. 
and it's terrible. Then you have like the regular people. You have um, Oz Alonzo plays Mother's Milk, who is trying to basically he's worked and trying to to discipline and save kids trying to destroy the seven uh the guy chase crawford who was originally in gossip girl he plays the deep who is basically an aquaman version he has literally no respect at all by any of the people and i guess as a way of like a power play structure he ends up sexually assaulting the other women his storyline is really sad and funny and he tries to like save he works as he's like i said he's kind of aquaman so he's out there with, with the fish and he's trying to save the fish lives and things just completely go awry. There's a wonderful dolphin scene. There's a lobster scene. <laughs> yeah, then there is this wonderful female, uh, um, Kimoku, who's played by Karen Fukashiwok. I just butchered that name. I'm really sorry, but she's a mute. She is, she is incredible. What did you see her powers, what she's able to do? And yeah, so I'm talking way too much. Then there's the Black Noir, who has like a couple scenes, but you know he's amazing if you ever read the comic books and what they're gonna do with him. So, yeah. Anything would you like to add? Yes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think the show is uh, definitely some a show that everybody should watch if they're a fan of. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, if you're a fan of superhero shows, but you're also tired of superhero shows, you should watch this because the way that they portray the characters, the struggles that they're going through, um, that's really a different perspective. And I appreciate the fact that uh, they are very graphic in the portrayal of the stuff that they put on this show, whether it's <laughs> the, the violence or, you know, the gratuitous, you know, a lot of really deep, deep issues that I think a lot of people may take, uh, you know, try to take aim at and say, oh, well, that's that's too controversial. I'm glad that they they just do what they want to do in this show. And obviously it is based off the comic. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I just I definitely enjoyed uh, all of the episodes that I watched because I did finish the show late, late well, early, early, early this morning. At like 3 a.m. because that was about the time that I uh, finished the last episode. But yeah, um, the conflicts that the characters deal with uh, definitely, definitely brings them down to earth. And just putting them in a situation where they are, they constantly feel pressure because you have this corporation telling you what you need to portray this type of image. You have to say this type of stuff in a speech. All this other type of stuff. I, I mean, I, I, I kind of understand why they do take some of the actions that they, 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 they do take. But with that said, the Homelander character is is definitely, is definitely, definitely an asshole in, in, in regards to the stuff that he does. I mean, there's no polite way to say it. This is a very ruthless individual. Um, so Not wrong in some of the things that he does. He's not wrong. Oh, yeah, he isn't. But, uh, the whole argument with like the airplane. Yes. It kind of makes sense. See, that made sense. But the question that I do have about that particular uh, scene, and hopefully people have already seen it. I, I don't want to really be spoiling any, anything if they haven't seen it. But honestly, they need to see the show. So just they can just forget everything I said and watch the show anyway after this. But I, I one thing I do want to say about that scene is. I understand the decision to do what they did to abort, but if I was them, and since it is already established that this guy is doesn't really care about the, the uh, what, what other people feel and all this other stuff, I would have made sure a hundred percent that no one, absolutely no one, survives that flight. And what I mean is, oh, I, I probably would have taken out some people just to make sure that, you know, if there is a crash, when the crash happens, there's nobody floating out to sea that still survives. I, I would have made sure, no, let me make sure that these people, are, they're not going to live to tell about this. But obviously, 
as it pans out in the show, there was no survivors. But I, I that was just something I was thinking in the back of my head because I thought, well, may, somebody might survive this and then they would have to take that person out. But they didn't go that route. See, I was I was hoping so desperately that one person would have survived <laughs> and that would have made for like an, 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 a juicier season two. This is what the guy did. This is what they purposely did to us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Because I wanted that that deal. But Homelander is just so and like you said, he he is he's ruthless. But there's a weird thing where like it's like it clicks, but that's how sociopath works. They kind of get that kind of thing that makes sense. And they just kind of really expand upon it to the point where it gets kind of crazy. And it's, you know, cult yeah. mentality. But, but, you know, the leader. Yeah. But, you know, what, 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 what you said about it, you understand why he makes some of the decisions that he, he, he makes. Uh, I do believe that the finale, well, I will say the episode, the episode before that and the episode leading into the finale, it, you know, when he starts to hear about all this other stuff that he was lied to about, well, yeah, now you understand because there's a lot of dishonesty with uh, the people in power who are obviously, well, the person that was in power, I should say, <laughs> you know, obviously lying about some stuff that's actually, you know, true um, or may not be accurate. I can understand why you were, okay, well, this is what, you, you lied about this, so now I don't trust you, so now that's it. Cause you have to sever ties with that person. So I understand some of these decisions that are made. And then, of course, the whole thing about when he delivered that speech that obviously was not the speech that they wanted him to deliver. I totally understand why you said, no, to hell with this. I'm going to go off and, and, and go into business for myself, so to speak. And drop my own pipe bomb in front of these people. So I, I, I certainly yeah. I, they, they certainly made you feel the characters are three dimensional, where you can feel some sympathy for some <clears throat> characters, but yes, you have to acknowledge that they are they are definitely bad people also. <laughs> but even that scene alone, where it took place at a Jesus convention, Christian <laughs> festival, yeah, where you know that scene alone, where it was like paired and we all said you know superman is basically jesus trade him in the movies yeah <clears throat> so to have that kind of godlike mentality wouldn't you kind of have that mentality if you had those powers too and people are literally viewing you as a god and you feel like a god and you think of your way as a god oh yeah oh yeah so for me that was I love the fact that it took place in an actual Christian where like, I would have never thought and that's how deep the show goes. Where it makes you think superheroes really existed in today in our world. Would they be Republican? Would they be Democrat? Oh, yeah. Would they be a atheists? <laughs> would they be Christians? Where's Jerry Falwell? And that's how deep that it may look like, oh, this is a silly superhero show. It's very deep in its thinking. Oh, yeah. Where the random questions like, yeah, he would view himself as Jesus. Here we're having people, and you know, you go to Christian and, and you're praying to God and, you know, God is God. But you're kind of that scene where he's flying and they reach up to him. They're kind of viewing him as God. Mm -hmm. Mind blowing how they filmed that, and also there was the, also at that same Christian convention with Starlight, and she's speaking to the girls, and she's having like this kind of heart to heart moment with like, "What do you do if a guy likes you? And have you ever had sex?" She can't even answer honestly mm -hmm. because she's trying to give that wholesome ABC Family type of appeal. <laughs> yeah the in the corner going i am jesus you will worship me <laughs> completely mind-blowing and also it shows how one's religion but kind of how people need or have to gravitate towards something to look up to 
Absolutely. And it's just really interesting that in all places that they filmed this, I don't haven't really read the comics, so I don't know if this was like ripped out of the comic books to make this into a, a Christian convention. Well, yeah. I'm, so I'm, by I'm, the way, the singers, remember, she was an angel. Well, she looked like an angel. Yeah. No. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely glad that they addressed that that particular scene because uh, I do feel that uh, yeah some of the religions do uh, emphasize that you have to or you can't do this because then you are considered impure and all this other stuff mm -hmm. uh, and that is you know that definitely is, is not how it should be so I'm glad that they addressed that you know that particular thing for sure because and with her situation, obviously, given what happened in the first episode, uh, yeah, that's that was a horrible situation. So, yeah, I, I'm glad they addressed that for sure. I remember how we, we in culture today, we look up to pop stars. I'm not sure if you remember, but remember the whole Britney Spears and the Justin Timberlake and the chastity rings? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. You know, I have my ring on. I'm saving myself for marriage. And we all know how that actually went out <laughs> yeah. in real life. He yeah. said, screw it all. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 so that, I, that, that, that yeah. does not happen all the time. That, that, that does not happen with uh, somebody waiting that long. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it was just, it was kind of, it was a very brilliant kind of, thing and also going back with homelander and madeline's character i between each other which is just a really weird mix of maybe brother and sister boyfriend girlfriend but it was definitely a very strong love and hate relationship where they they there was love there but they did not like each other at all you're talking about elizabeth shoe and uh elizabeth shoe and then yeah. Homelander. Oh, oh yeah, the, the the mother and the uh, the son, because yeah, it he, was like... he he was the baby that they that they showed they showed him as a as a little kid, um, raised in the facility, I guess. So... She wasn't there. That was the thing that I was kind of I was slightly confused about their relationship. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Because remember, they they gender swapped her out because in the comics, she was James Stillwell. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand their relationship between it. And he was jealous because she had the baby. That, uh... that is another thing that I didn't understand. Come from because they never showed who the father was. They never made any mention of it. And the baby did not have superpowers. Yeah, I didn't understand that either because I had thought that that could have been uh, his. <laughs> his child but obviously that answer was uh we received the answer about about that whole situation in the finale so right and even <laughs> in that finale that was so brutal <laughs> everyone went a lot of casualties oh yeah oh yeah that and it was just so sad you had right the deep being this terrible person he was just so sad anything you know oh, yeah. him trying to save the dolphin lobster <laughs> him being sexually assaulted with his gills oh yes mm -hmm. the house it was just the saddest thing ever and him just having no respect at all I, I, it was you know yeah. I, I I I do I do have to say um now I I, I will admit that I uh, do not really recall uh, Gossip Girl in its entirety, but I find it interesting that that particular actor signed up to play this character, knowing that the character was going to go through this type of stuff in the you know in the in the actual storyline, because I think that this guy is seen as a bit of a heartthrob, at least <laughs> from what I recall when he was on Gossip Girl, he was seen as well, you know, all heartthrobs. Yeah. So, so, it is, yeah. so, so, so to take on that role it is, uh, it definitely is a very, a very, uh, powerful move to make because you know that some people will now perceive 
you know, look at the character and be like, well, yeah, this, this yeah. They, he's 34 now, like back when he was doing Gossip Girl. That was in, in, in 2007. This, 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 this is true. This is true. This, this, you know, he was a little baby. Now he's a grown man. Yes. Raping women. <laughs> in the show, not in real life. In the show. In, in the show, yes. <laughs> in the show. But, but I mean, I, 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 I will say this, though. It, they, they definitely, the way they have handled this season... There is a going to be a, certainly a lot of things to cover in season two because <laughs> you have all of those characters. We have to see the falling out of what will happen with A Train after, you know, what happened with him in the finale. Well, well yeah, there's there's not going to be many people returning. Let's just say that. <laughs> like it was just like brutal. It was like, oh my gosh. You know, a lot of babies died. A lot of babies killed, too, by the way. Laser baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With the laser baby. Um, you have the whole situation of the, re the revelation towards the end, before the ultimate revelation. The revelation Wait. that there are also enemies that are, that are also <laughs> su super soups now. So, See, that's where I got the Brightburn element. But I'm like, Homelander is crazy, so maybe he's Brightburn. That 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 is a very a very good question to 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 really ask because he very well could be Brightburn. I mean, I I, I mean, they are going to make a Brightburn too, correct? So, I don't know. If this, I, I have to believe maybe this this stuff is connected. Um, it just kind of felt like, like, like compare because we know that that Homelander came way before Brightland, Brightburn. Yeah, yeah. Literally, what happens when Brightburn grows up? He becomes Homelander. This, the, 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 this is very true. <laughs> you know. This is Homelander. So, it, it, but it, we also know that there are other. I'm pretty sure that there are other people out there that they have not right. really come forward and revealed yet that they... Remember, they own 200-plus superheroes. They're basically WWE. They have all this talent. <laughs> no one's being used but the seven. Wow, if you really do think of it, it is WWE. They're not DC Marvel. They're WWE. They brought, they bought all this talent, created it in the, in the performance center. Yeah. And only they only show seven. Yes. The whole time, the same seven. <laughs> yeah. So we have to see from the other 200 plus. We have to get Black Noir. Um, also, here's the weird thing with the, like, the superhero terrorist groups now. I don't exactly, because Homelander's crazy. I wonder if they will be a threat to the um, basic population of people and not so much other superheroes. Just because of how crazy Homelander is. Well, see, that is, that is going to be a very interesting dynamic that they will have to explain. Because I, I I think that a lot of people, if they have ever seen a movie, or they have ever seen some type of, read a book or whatever, you already know that if somebody usually creates something, that can lead to their downfall because they will underestimate that the creation that they made now comes after them and can overtake them. So I, I'm curious to see how they're going to approach that particular uh, thing because obviously, I mean, his intention of creating these, you know, these enemies it is definitely designed to help, you know, put even more emphasis on why they need the superheroes in the first place. But there's definitely going to be some issues with that. I don't believe that that's going to be a seamless transition with, oh, it all works out perfectly the way he's going to work out. So I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to approach that because uh, they very well could make it be a, a seamless transition. And he could be the one that reveals, well, I am the one that created all of you. So now you all are going to follow my rules and they could follow his rules or they could say, hell no, and, to, and rebel against them. So I'm I'm very curious to see how they handle that because that's definitely going to be one plot that we know for sure is going to be brought up again in season two. Um, uh, that, yeah. So that, and then of course the state of the, the the current state of the seven because it's not seven anymore. You know, obviously, uh, you know, it's not seven <laughs> anymore. So I, I don't really know how you're uh, 
being oh, referred, to, a... referred to as a seven, I mm. I was I, I was wondering, and I don't know if you had seen this or if you maybe noticed this. They said that there was another person that retired. Um, I'm curious what really happened to that person because I thought they were going to actually revisit and show you something that happened to that person. Something maybe shady happened to that character because that character decided that they wanted to stop it and maybe they the, and then the agency told them you know there was some some pushback that they you know some pushback or some type of conflict and then they decided to have to take the character out so i was wondering if they were going to revisit that as well i don't know who retired aside from light the light lamp the lamp lighter lamp lighter oh okay okay yeah it's the only one who retired okay everyone yeah. else is kind of you know Every, everyone everyone else is still there so um let's just say that <laughs> yes bomb y'all yeah no overall it was it is oh gosh it's so beautiful so beautiful what they created oh, and yeah. it's so many different questions oh yeah every part there, there, there are there are definitely a, t a ton of questions, a, a ton of things they can explore for the next season. But uh, yeah, so uh, definitely, definitely, definitely want to encourage people to watch this show ASAP. Don't don't wait until um, you know. I mean, obviously, you can yeah. wait until <laughs> there's a release date for season two. But I, I would, if you have Amazon, watch this now. And and, and I will also add that. Watching this show now convinced me that I 100% need to check out all of the other shows on Amazon Prime because they, I mean, obviously, I, I really think this show is a big deal for them. And I'm very curious to see what other shows they create or are able to create because this was a success, provided that it is a success. But I'm pretty sure it is going to be a success. Um, it it yes it it takes the Deadpool concept and just, everything is by five billion. <laughs> this and its success, we can finally start getting more R-rated superhero shows. Yes, yes. Experiment that went really well that I think because of Deadpool was just kind of really successful on it as well. That's true. Because this this show has been in, in making in for decades. Wow. For long I, time. I, 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 I definitely didn't know that. This came, this, they've been trying to work on something. Because uh, remember, the original in the comic, it was set in 2006. Oh, whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, yeah, they've, they've been working on something since around, and, and it just never really worked. This, this has been a very long thing, and it originally was canceled. The uh, comic book series was originally canceled. Hmm. So, they was really the reason why it was canceled because DC Comics comfortable with the anti superhero tone of the work. Uh oh, this wasn't the right time. And now we look. What do we have now? We have anti superhero movies. We have Brightburn. Anti-hero. He was kind of anti-hero-ish. He was in his. He was in the Homelander, but you know he had his little his little moments because of like it took so long. Times had to change. I think now certain things, and also because we're flooded so much with superhero movies, and we have the MCU and we have the DCU it helps. So. They've been working on this for a while. I I, hey. I, I, I had no idea it has been that long. So I'm glad to see that it actually uh, got done and out there. Done and out there. There's 76 issues. Go read it. It's not. I mean, you can't compare it to the to the to the comics because they change a lot of things. Better. Yeah. It just really works. I say, go, I say, go, I go watch it. Go read the comics and see if that works. <laughs> hey, I, th 
think it was brilliant. Did you have to say about this, the thing? Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, this is definitely something that everybody needs to check out. Um, so I would also encourage that, but yes, well, well worth the, the eight hours that I spent, uh, watching the first season. <laughs> Absolutely. 10, 10 hours. Wait, how many episodes were there? It wasn't 10. Oh no, it was, it was, it, 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 it was eight. Uh, I think, uh, oh, okay. season two got 10 episodes though. I think. Okay. After that, after that, have, have, have to have to double check that. Okay, because like I saw it originally it was six, and then I looked up. I'm like, there's two more. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm excited but confused. <laughs> the shows where like you watch it, but then you get really angry because then you have that long period to wait for the next season. Oh yeah, well, 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 well. I, well, I will say this: um, we we definitely had you know have had to wait for a lot of other shows. So, one show that I do know it, we, is coming back by the, by the end of this year is, uh, you know, You, season two. So uh, starring another Gossip Girl alumni. It, 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 exactly. So, you see, we will definitely have some stuff to keep us busy while we wait for this particular show to return. <laughs> oh, you so much. It's so brilliant. <laughs> you, because it was just amazing. But also, really interesting. This is a Harper back on on um, the boys. There was a scene so graphic that even Amazon was like, "We love you, but you you can't do that." Well, hold on. What scene was this? Well, basically, they said the um uh they, um so Eric Kripite I can't I can't. I can't, I can't pronounce these words, but Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg also did it. Remember, it's based on the, the, the graphic novels, but basically they said during um, an AMA on Tuesday, the scene that Amazon made them cut. And he says, I couldn't quite understand why, considering everything else that we shot in this show. But Homelander, after being dressed down by Elizabeth Shue in episode two, of the Chrysler building Eagles, he pulls his pants down off mumbling i can do whatever i want over and over again until he climaxed all over new york city whoa 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> i'm not well, well, I'm, 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 I'm not sure from a technical standpoint how that how that will work um, i mean you don't show it obviously but you you know you pimp to mind the accents but, but, the but, all, but all over new york city and they, and they shot it. The thing is that they actually shot the scene. Whoa, whoa, whoa. John thought that it was completely unnecessary. And and he was really mad, Anthony, who plays Homelander, because he thought that it gave him, like, an actual psyche into the mind of Homelander. Ah, uh, I see. Well, I mean, was, they, they could have shown that another way, though. Did they have to uh, show it uh, from, <laughs> you know, by, but with, with that particular action? I mean, but it's such a F you to the city. Like, he's self all over New York. <laughs> oh, wow. God, it, he's so arrogant. I, I, he's I, just, I, I just, I, I, I just have to ask who came up with this idea? Uh, and, 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 and did the person that came up with this idea, was they also somebody that was looking at Ricochet's uh, recent uh, work online? Oh, <laughs> Ooh, that's just yeah, very disturbing. That's what I have to there. say. Very just disturbing. <laughs> but um, aside from the uh, um, I can't unthink. I can't unsee that now. <laughs> that's like I literally have it in my mind. We're like it's an overhead shot, and he's. Oh, and he's probably with, well, he's with Elizabeth Shue, and he's just, you know, doing his business. <laughs> I hope they don't show anything falling down. Oh, whoa, no. Wow. No. Thing. Ew. Oh, gosh. 
So anyway, they are halfway through filming season two, by the way. Oh, whoa, really? Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know and it was that, that they. Fast. Amazon doesn't announce anything because remember they announced it was already greenlit like right before this show dropped and then they dropped it early on top of that to tell us everything. So so what you're basically saying is that we, we could probably get this show starting next year. Yes, it did say 2020. Yeah, so, but, so not, 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 not like waiting a whole year like with power. Well, you're not going to get the show until the summer um, of uh, of next year Cause... could be the summer of next year because they could pull a Game of Thrones situation. Ah, okay. Summer release, so it could be July twenty twenty, <laughs> and we just have to and, and take our spinach and make sure that we're we do some crunches, and we're still around. I hope it's not that long. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I'm just really excited, and then I'm kind of angry at myself for like binging. I need my season two now. Well, that yep, yeah, that 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 is the one thing about the binging when you watch it is is when it's a good show, <laughs> it makes right. the wait even even harder to know that well now I have to wait maybe up to a year until I see what is what happens next. So that's the one right. downside to binging the shows, but it, again. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent worth the eight hours to watch the show. <laughs> they did announce one thing, though, a little, a little, a little teaser of a tease. Oh, what was that? Um, that she is apparently a part of "You're the Worst" as a TV show. I don't remember which station it came on. I don't know if it's canceled or still on, but um, she will be playing Stormfront. Oh, really? New character. Yeah, she's playing Stormfront. I love how you said it. Like, yeah, I know Stormfront. Uh, like yeah, really, I'm excited for Stormfront. But um, yes, she is basically uh, meant to it because I don't know the character. Okay, so Stormfront is basically they said that it's 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 Thor. Oh yeah. Um, his okay. public origin. Okay, it's similar to Thor. His public origin is that he is a reincarnated Viking, and he uses and use of his electrical powers in apparent of the weather fly at supersonic speeds, causing a sonic boom outside a building, mm. and to escape to be the second most powerful. It's a Homelander. And has proven more of a match for any single member of the boys. Uh oh. Uh oh. His true origin, which is a secret from the general public, is that he is the first successful super soldier of the Third Reich. Oh. He was just a child. Hitler's advisors thought that he should be destroyed, but instead, the creator of V. Okay. Here we go. He's like the anti Captain America. He's, he's Homelander, but like Homelander's Homelander. <laughs> he's Red Skull. But um bump. And second to uh to Homelander, you said. If that's yeah, if that's if that's a good comparison. You have you have Captain America and you have Red Skull. So he's Red Skull. Interesting. I didn't offend anyone with that comparison. So yeah, that that is what ends up happening. So, that, well, that that yeah. definitely that definitely sounds intriguing because yeah yeah because they, they 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 pretty much they had a ver they had versions of some of these other characters. Obviously, you know, you have uh, the deep Aquaman, uh, the Wonder Woman character. Uh, so yeah, Thor, a, a version of Thor. Yeah, sign me up. I, I definitely want to see that. And if this is if they play it true to comics, this means Mother's Milk will have a larger role. I just don't know why he's called, and we will know why he's called Mother's Milk. Yeah, but um, he's supposed Mother's to have, Milk. He's supposed to have a power too. When I looked at the uh... oh no, he's regular. They changed it. Oh, he's okay. he's regular. Also, he well, but they, yeah, they're gonna, um, he, they're gonna do something. They got they're gonna do something with him at some point, I guess. Oh yeah, so that will happen. And in the comic is that um. 
Storm, what is it, Stormfront, ends up going against the Butcher, Mother's Milk, and the Frenchman. Uh-oh. I like the Frenchman. I like his little accent. He's, he's in his, he likes that girl. It's so cute. <laughs> but, yeah, but basically what ends up happening is that they squeeze they squeeze uh, uh, Stormfront's area, and it causes it to rupture, and his lower intestines rupture as well. Oh, whoa, whoa. So yeah, you can you can squeeze he squeeze the ding dong till he just bled out. Oh no! Ooh, ouch! Okay. <laughs> You're like I felt that. I, 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 I definitely don't don't want to see a close up of that scene. So hopefully, uh, you know, they, they, <laughs> you're crossing they, they, your use, legs. Use some discretion <laughs> when 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 they, when they show that. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, that was so. That's coming in season two. Yay balls! <laughs> But lastly, the story that I forgot to mention before, because like it's the boys, um, we are getting, and a lot of people are like, "Yay, this is, this is exciting!" I'm kind of like, "Man," but we are getting a Wendy Williams biopic. <laughs> That's the one thing that we all know that we need in our lives is a Wendy Williams biopic. So I'm excited about that because every day you're like, "Oh my gosh, I love Wendy Williams." What oh, is no. she doing right now? I, so, I, I, yeah. I, I, I just have one question to ask. Uh, is Wendy Williams uh, involved in this project as in directing or producing this uh, biopic? Okay, so here's, here's the entire thing. You ready? Yeah. Here's the full details that we have so far. The biopic will span uh, her life from the age of 10 to 55. It will cover her cope habit fat shaming from her family, and a never before told story of date rape, uh -oh. art topping artist. There will be at least two different Wendy's in the movie and both will be unknown actresses. Is her experiences with racism and sexism in Hollywood, details from her marriage from Kevin Hunter, who you know allegedly abused her and got a, the side chick pregnant and she had a baby. Also cover her divorce as well as her relationship with Mo Monique. Uh oh. My relationship with Monique, but uh -oh. I will. I am intrigued. Monique. Uh oh. Monique. <laughs> uh, Wendy and Will Packer will be producing the biopic, and it's dubbed right now just Wendy. Okay. Well, Wendy Williams and Leah Davenport will also write the screenplay, so she's writing it as well. Include. All of the rappers who tried to body slam her in the street, out chasing attempts, her hatred for women, her hatred for black women, her blaming Kesha for getting raped, her feud with Whitney Houston, Steve Harvey's ra hate hatred for her, uh, Kanye West's hatred for her, the, um, her skin shaming Paris Hilton, Method Man dissing her, Angie Martinez trying to fight her, making fun of Terry Crews for being sexually assaulted by another man, uh -oh. the Tupac diss song, because Tupac wrote a diss song about Wendy, also, her hatred for women not being able to take care of their man and pleasing them properly. So that, oh my gosh, I'm dying. Uh oh. <coughs> I'm sorry. So that's everything that's gonna be in it. Well. So. Well, it's a, well, well, well. You know, I'm. I'm now that I know that Will Packer is involved, I'm sure that will absolutely, positively, get a lot more people somewhat interested in this particular right. uh, 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 film. But I do have to say right now, because I am somewhat, I look at Wendy Williams and, 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 and somewhat already annoyed. I don't know if Ooh. I will have the stomach to see this this particular. Uh, film but oh. i will definitely watch the trailer whenever they release the uh official trailer i will watch that trailer um yeah no i completely um yeah no i understand exactly what you mean and it, yeah, i've had like a weird thing with wendy williams where i was um or by by my aunt who loved watching listening to her radio show back in the day she had the radio show as well, and then she gave the Wendy advice. She always had the guest on who was trying to fight her. 
it was it was really good and she was always talking about a lot of people and that gossiping thing but i was also very young and as i got older Wendy's lost her appeal for me. Uh oh. Kind of became uh, between gossiping about somebody and talking about them, you know, for the source of you, this is your TV show and your entertainment. But I kind of feel like as I got older, like she is taking like a personal pleasure to people's downfalls. Yeah. Mm hmm. And so as a result, it's just been kind of a turnoff. Like her show does air, and I, I watched from when she had this, the, the very beginning, which was like, what, 10 years ago? Oh my gosh, how old am I? But anyway, like they're on season 10, I believe. So like I would watch, but it just over, after a while, it just kind of got like, and full of, it just became more nasty around and here's the gossip where like she would make fun of people and she's did a lot of body shaming herself there's an incident that i will never forgive where this was the part where, where kesha the the singer yeah. trial where she was you know she was she claimed that she was raped luke i believe and they went to court for that yeah. so where wendy was like well you should have had a camera or forgive her for saying that was basically saying well if you wanted to prove you was raped you should have had a camera oh no uh -uh. it's basically also saying that women are supposed to be around to please man to please a man she said that before in the past she talked about her, her breast surgery and that they were fun bags for men and it was just certain things that she just kind of that's your point of view and that's how you want to live your life and that's your opinion okay but i don't want to keep subjecting myself to that yeah you know it's your fault you got raped or why didn't you record you being raped those kind of things and even when she's talking about celebrities like i said before it's kind of like a spite like a meanfulness and you know kind of like she she keeps talking negatively about certain women repeatedly so it just became kind of stale. And even now, I know she's going through the divorce with, with Kevin. So, so you know, so, yeah. So, so, so in other words, this, 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 this is a, this is a movie that will still be going on as it's uh, being filmed. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, it's going to just cover her from 55. So it's just the recent <laughs> stuff. So maybe it'll probably end with her leaving Kevin Hunter. And like, I don't know, maybe like a, uh, an entire waiting to exhale moment <laughs> was set on fire with a, uh, Angela Bassett and she set the car on fire. So maybe it's like, I'm sick of your stuff, Kevin. And she like sets the car on fire and she walks away and finds her freedom. <laughs> Cookie cutter ending where like she divorced the man who allegedly was abusing her and, and cheating on her and had the side baby with the side mama yeah i don't yeah so you know it, again it's it's gonna just it's just a movie meant for entertainment also on top of that if it wasn't for will packer i definitely wouldn't be interested because the last time wendy williams did a movie that was the Aaliyah biopic oh i didn't and know she was involved yeah in she was a producer she cast in um alexandra ship it was supposed to be another girl yeah mm. wow it was supposed to be zendaya so the script and was like, nope, I'm going to go have a career that's successful. <laughs> she dropped out. And then we had Alexandra Shep, who, you know, did the best that she could do with the material that was given to her, which is not saying a lot. Wow. It was like a beautiful thing. Of, just everything was just a disaster. And it got so bad where they had to turn off the comment section and like Instagram. Yeah. So that's coming. <laughs> we have something to look forward to in its lifetime. So I'm just here for the bad casting. Well, the, the only, only thing I, I, that I will say is uh, I would hope that, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want her, it, because she is involved, 
I don't want her to glamorize or fabricate some of the details. I, I would appreciate you just be as real and raw about the struggles and the stuff that you've gone through because some people may find value in that information if they are going through some stuff of their own. But don't uh, hey. sit here and try to create something where you say you pretend like you made all these excellent decisions and all this other stuff. You no, know, you have to be honest about this because uh, I think people, they will see through it if you're not honest about it, about this, about a lot of this stuff. Um, Brown movie where basically you was the one trying to save Whitney Houston from doing crack. Oh, yeah. And that you had to walk away from her because you realized you couldn't save her at the end of the day and that she abused you. Because remember, that was a Lifetime movie as well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're going to get the actual picture because, one, we don't know the real story of how certain things went down. There's a lot of rumors. We don't know what fully happened. I'm just really upset that it's not going to include the Whitney Houston fallout because that was in my brain that was forever um her fall out with Whitney Houston over the radio <laughs> and Whitney basically calling her out and was like when you're in the corner smoking crack with me uh -oh. in like ever so nicer terms uh -oh. it was it was brilliant and and it was interesting and that's when you know later on when Whitney Houston passed away that's when uh, Wendy Williams was like crying hysterically yeah, I don't think we're gonna get that version, but we'll get we'll get a nice cookie cutter version of what she wants us to believe. Yeah. The rumor that she is trying to shop around her in like an interview and a tell all interview. <laughs> but like Caitlyn Jenner had with the whole Robin Roberts situation. Yeah. I think that was Robin Roberts, or maybe that was Diane Sawyer. But anyway, the thing is is that it uh Rob what is Gail King to interview her. The rumor, this is not like, I don't know how factual and actual it is, but it's been going around. Gail King and everyone else turned her down because they don't view her as being somebody cares about. She's just, you know, the celebrity gossip host person. Uh -oh. And that they turned down the interview. And also with the interview, she wanted full control over the questions, the editing, so they said no. <laughs> Way of like getting the interview. Here's my movie. So then that way she gets the interview. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, that's too much. <laughs> Anything else you have to say, Mr. Mr. Bailey Jr.? Oh no, um, I think that's pretty much it for tonight. Um, definitely want to thank those that uh, had a chance to check out the show and uh, definitely check out um, the two definitely check out the boys if you, if you have Amazon you know if you have a free trial or you can you know I don't know use someone's Prime account uh, with their permission of course <laughs> yeah, yeah, use that yeah, Prime yeah, 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 definitely check that out and uh, you know if you uh, want to go to, to, to the theaters I guess yeah go check out uh, any of the movies that we mentioned except for Stuba don't don't uh, don't, don't I mean don't, don't, I mean <laughs> no no, um, no I mean no um, no DVD you yeah, know, yeah. do do that. Streaming services. I'm sure it'll be on Netflix because that way they'll, you know, it's WWE Superstar, so Netflix. Oh, yeah. Wait until streaming services. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, go see a matinee. Love it. You love it. And if you didn't, you only paid, I don't know, what, five, six dollars? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, there's power. So I, I know you're excited. Oh, I'm, for that, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to power. You know, no doubt about that. Uh, we're pretty much right here in August, so in August, and you're doing a huge premiere um, at Madison Square Garden. Oh, whoa, whoa, Madison Square Garden. Jeez, that should be fun. People, tons of people stuck in a crowded room. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so 
Yay! So that seems to be it for uh, thank you very much for listening to our rambles. Um, back once again next week with coming out because I have bad memory. Oh, yeah. yeah Sean yeah. Hobbs. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yep, there you go. That's right. The, 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 that'll be the uh, the number one movie at the box yes. office. No, it won't, won't be number one at the box office, but yeah, it'll be in the top three. <laughs> I can't see it kind of knocking off Lion King. I mean, because we still got to wait a while for what is it? Ten? Are they, what are they on? Fast Ten? This, no, Fast Nine. Well, well, well. Remember that this has absolutely nothing to do with Fast and Furious. This is just the uh, the characters yeah. that you but know because you know if because you, you know if you, when you mention Fast and Furious and, and this in the same sentence then. Tyrese gets very angry the minute that you mention that. He starts you crying. Have to, you have to, you have to, you know, separate the two of them for, for his sanity. But he starts crying. <laughs> oh gosh, y'all killing me! You remember, he couldn't pay his bills, so oh, yeah, yeah. But it's predicted to make 195 million global. Whoa, global. Okay, yeah, but global. Okay. Well, global. Well, yeah, that's certainly possible. Mm-hmm. No, and also they did say that there will be justice for Han. So if you're a fan of the series and you know who Han is, he will be he he will be he will be resurrected. But like there will be justice for Han. Interesting. Well, uh, yeah, that certainly that certainly will be. I mean, I am going to see that. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, and make a lie and say, oh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm definitely willing to go see that. There's no doubt about that. What's up? Yeah. I mean, you have you have Dwayne Johnson. You have Roman Reigns. Yes. It's going to happen. There, I, I there's some it. other surprises. I think it will tie into the Fast and Furious franchise thing. Yeah. You know, we might and other characters might pop up that they're not you know advertising. Maybe and, at the end. Well, they may pop up in nine. That certainly is possible, and and, and, and if that and if that is the case, then the Rock and Tyrese re- really was playing around with people with the beef. It, but no, we 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 really are working together on something else. But then, so they they would have pulled off an excellent trick to convince people. See, they just didn't real attention. Just never told Tyrese that Rock was filming, and it's like a whole separate scene. They keep them apart. <laughs> shot where it's like some random cameo thing and cry is just not there and then that way everyone wins oh yeah that's the be, it should be fun it's fun so i look forward to that eventually no one gave me a press pass so screw you oh oh whoa oh when it comes to franchises it tends to be every other movie It, yeah, but you said except for this one. Uh, it's like it's it's no. I think I'm just like stuck with just the main franchise. I don't get the spinoffs. I don't think, but I will still see the movie. That's not deterring because the movie, the concept itself, is just silly, and it's popcorny, and well, it's a lot of negativity going out in the world where I just want to watch cars fly in the air. Oh yeah. and I'm happy it seems to be everything so we will talk again next week we're down Hobbs and Shaw between one of us we will see the movie yes absolutely you have your Amazon what is it your AMC card unlimited oh well yeah I just paid that today so I damn sure I'm going to see the movie because I'm not going to be wasting money and, and not uh, uh, get to the see, movie um, theaters so yeah, I, I, I'll definitely see it at some point. I don't know what day, but yeah, definitely gonna see it. His bills. Oh snap! <laughs> we will. We will return next week. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon, night, evening. Yes. Talk to you all next time.